seated if you can. I want to teach for a few minutes now. We'll walk with the time. But I want you to be sensitive. Because whilst I'm teaching, the Lord is touching people. The Lord is healing the sick. The Lord is bringing restoration to men and women. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let's discuss encounters very quickly. Job chapter 42. Please help them, help them. Just keep them maybe on their seats or somewhere. Job chapter 42 and verse 5. Let's get to scripture now. Job chapter 42 and verse 5. If you can see it projected, please read with me. Ready? One to read. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see thee. I heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now you have brought me into a realm of encounter. In Exodus chapter 3, the Bible tells us that Moses, having run away from Egypt after killing one of the Egyptians, he was banished and he ran away. The Bible says he was tending his father in Lord Sheep Jethro. Are we together? Then the Bible says that Moses saw a scenery that caught his attention. He said he saw a bush that was bony and yet not consumed. It was God luring Moses into an experience that would prepare him to advocate the exodus of God's people. Then the Bible says Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when God saw that he turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground. And then through a series of other encounters, he revealed himself as I am to Moses. He said, now on the strength of this encounter, go to your half-brother Ramesses, who is now the Pharaoh of Egypt, and tell him, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, the one you met in the wilderness, let my people go. When he went and met Ramesses, who was now the Pharaoh of Egypt, after communicating all that, you would think that Pharaoh would say, Wow, Moses, okay, go. He refused. And he said, Who is this one that sent you? And Moses threw his rod as a token of that encounter. And Pharaoh laughed. He said, You are bringing this childish manifestation to Egypt, the center of wizardry. Chambers, Chambers, come, show this man that this is Egypt. They threw their rods and they also became serpents. To cut the long story short, on the strength of that encounter, it got to a point where the firstborn of Pharaoh died and he had to release the people of God. Gave them gold, gave them silver, did not even allow their bread to rise and he sends them with the outstretched arm of God. Your exploits in this kingdom, I will repeat myself, is predicated on your encounters. But there are four levels of encounters. Let me run through them very quickly. And the order of those encounters also matter. I'm going to be communicating them according to the order. Number one, very quickly. The first encounter that any man and any woman who desire to be used by God would have to go through is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Write it down, please. No matter what else you encounter, if you have not encountered Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you have not begun your journey in the faith life. This looks simple and this looks basic. But if we do not help people, we will have so many people in church, but very few people who are sincerely born again. The first encounter in this order is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Can I tell you this? Jesus is not just a prophet. Jesus is not just a wise sayer. Jesus is not just a spiritual leader. If you define Jesus by those terms, you do not know him. Who do men say that I, the son of man, is? And some said you are Elijah. Some said you are one of the prophets. He said, but you, what is your verdict about my person? And Peter speaking by the Spirit said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, 
the son of the living God. And he said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. That means the revelation of the sonship of Jesus has to come from the Father. Listen very carefully. It is not enough to believe in Jesus. What you believe about him also matters. There are people who believe in Jesus as a prophet. There are people who believe in Jesus as one of those revered leaders. The Bible tells us, and from the authority of scripture we stand, that Jesus is the son of the living God. It is important to understand he is not an archangel. He is not one of the angels. He is not just a spiritual being. Jesus himself, the Bible calls him the, the express image of the invisible God. The revelation of the Father to us, Jesus. If you do not encounter Jesus, you can still be in church. You can write books. You can even be a man of God. But I assure you by the authority of scripture, you are not saved. For my Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. You don't give your life to the Holy Spirit. You don't give your life to an angel. No, the, the administrator of the life of God, the advocate, the mediator is Jesus, the son of the living God. Please shout that name. Say Jesus. An encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. There are three blessings that follow this encounter. Very quickly. If you truly encounter Jesus, the son of the living God, there are three blessings. Number one is access to the life of God. This is the first blessing. John chapter 3 and verse 16 A popular scripture says For God so loved the world That he gave his one and only begotten But now he is not his one and only begotten Today he is the firstborn of we the begotten Are we together? He says he gave his one and only begotten That whosoever believes in him No prejudice, no sentiments Whosoever believes in him Shall not perish but have everlasting life the word everlasting is not a very accurate translation of the greek word zoe the greek word zoe does not just mean life without end for in reality everybody has everlasting life is that true when you die in this physical realm you do not cease to exist the issue is location not continuity of living those in hell are still alive Lazarus and the rich man even when they both left the earth realm so the life Jesus came to give us is not just everlasting it's a quality of life God's own life not just the God kind of life it is not the kind it is the very life of God Apostle John said this is the record that God has given us the way eternal life he said but he designed the administration of that life such that that life comes through an encounter with his son so that he that had the son had eternal life so i know that you have the life of god by verifying whether you have met the son if you have not met the son you may have another kind of life but it is not god's life the first blessing of an encounter with the son of the living god is access to the life of god number two the second blessing is access to righteousness romans chapter 5 and verse 17 righteousness is the nature of god it is very powerful righteousness is one of the things that man lost through the fall men like ew kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand before the father's presence without a sense of guilt inferiority and condemnation but it's more than that righteousness is the very nature of god are we together now yes when you are justified by faith you have access to righteousness it is righteousness that qualifies you to now be a partaker 
of that divine life because the condition to be a carrier of god's life is that you must have righteousness equal to that of jesus so he administers his righteousness justification by faith the bible says here's how the bible puts it it says christ has delivered us redeemed us from the cause of the law being made a cause for us for it is written in the mosaic law cost is every man that hangs upon the tree why that the blessing of abraham the blessing of abraham is not cars and houses no the blessing of abraham is justification by faith may come upon all those who believe to the end that them be justified now might receive the promise of the spirit through faith access to righteousness the blessedness of encountering the son of god and then the third blessing very quickly is access to what we call grace ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 a concept that has been so talked about but rarely understood access to grace what is grace is more than just unmerited favor ephesians chapter 1 please and verse 3 this is the definition of grace blessed be god and the father of our lord jesus christ who had blessed us the bible says with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places the grace of god is defined as every spiritual blessing every possibility that is contained in god given to the saints only through the office of christ this is called grace so the power of god is grace the wisdom of god is grace speed is grace are we together now the ability of the spirit is grace every spiritual possibility that is contained in god and released to the saints only through the office of the christ is called grace is beyond that which is received as new birth no grace is like the spiritual warehouse that contains all the possibilities that are in god but the authorized channel for access is christ are we together so when you encounter the son of god you have access to his life you have access to righteousness you have access to grace in fact let me add one more one more that is so needed in our world today you have access to what the bible calls the peace of god write it down this is what money cannot buy this is what education cannot provide listen very carefully this is what wealth and fame and human achievements cannot provide in fact one of the dividing the clearest proof that you have met jesus is the peace of god he said peace i give you my peace i leave with you not as the world gives peace a state of restfulness even in the midst of storms you are happy for reasons that men cannot understand let me tell you this if you have not experienced the peace of god in your life depression will weigh you down to death we live in a society today where people both young and old are adopting all kinds of diseases and infirmities teenagers are carrying high blood pressure because we have not learned the power of the peace of god it is the peace of god that grants you grace to sit in the midst of plenty or little and still be happy not defined by the things around you the peace of god that someone tells you your car was just stolen and you say wow that's not good but not enough to hang yourself uh -uh. the peace of god This generation needs to understand once again the power of the peace of God. The most accurate definition of wealth is peace. No matter what you have, if you do not have the peace that comes with it, you are really not blessed. We are just on point one. An encounter with the Son of God. That you get to that point where like the apostle paul you have made peace with god and you have the peace of god peace with god means that you know that you are one with him both in this life and after this life you no longer are afraid of death because you have peace with god but then you have the peace of god in your heart
that shields you from the vicissitudes of life. So you laugh at storms, not out of a sense of irresponsibility, but you are unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. I believe in the peace of God. I truly believe in the peace of God. Please hear me. The Lord is speaking to someone. The way you are living your life, you are ready to depress to death. You need to embrace the peace of God tonight. The peace of God does not get you saved. No. Having a Christian name does not get you saved. Participating in church activity does not get you saved. The formula is in Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 and 10. The Bible says the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith that we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy heart, with your mouth and then with your heart, the Lord Jesus, verse 9 says, He says, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Somewhere before the end of this program, I'm going to make an altar call today. And there are many of you, the Lord is already speaking to you sincerely. You may be a sincere person, very well meaning, but you truly need an encounter with Jesus. Can I touch on one more encounter for tonight? Number two, the second encounter that you need is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Write it down. We need this dimension of encounter in the middle belt. It is, it is, it is an encounter that is needed not just in Plateau State alone. The middle belt so desperately needs an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please look up. This is not about Pentecostalism at all. Please do not confuse what I'm teaching here. This is not some, some, some manifestation of irresponsible people. I'm talking about the genuine encounter because many have mocked the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We have ignored his ministry. So even though we have preserved morality, we continue to labor in the flesh to achieve things that only walked as an ordinary man for 30 years until the heavens were opened over him and the bible says that the holy spirit descended upon him in the similitude of a dove that became the beginning of his supernatural ministry the first revelation of god in the bible the godhead that was revealed in the bible that we see operating was the holy spirit Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is a Hebrew word, Tohu Abohu. Confusion and chaos. And then the Bible says, And the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters. This is my Bible. There was no man in Scripture from genesis to revelation not even jesus himself who was able to satisfy the father's desire outside of the participation of the holy spirit here's how paul puts it speaking to the church in corinth he said the grace of our lord jesus christ we recite it after every service but now you hear it from the spirit the grace of our lord jesus christ he said the love of god and the fellowship it's the word koinonia the sharing together the participation of the holy ghost it says let it be with you let it abide with you the holy ghost is the one who can turn ordinary men into signs and wonders john chapter 14 from verse 16 to 18 jesus himself is teaching now John 14 from verse 16, please. He began to introduce them to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. They had seen his invincible life. This son of a carpenter had now become a sign and a wonder. Healing the sick, raising the dead, multiplying bread. This man became invincible single-handedly. He 
responsible for the exploits of ordinary men. Here in Joss, there were mighty men and women who were raised. Ordinary people. Some of them were not educated. Some of them did not have any enlightenment. But they stumbled across this strange personality of the Holy Spirit. Until today we continue to talk of their exploits. Even upon the plateau. They left prophetic words before they went to be with the Lord. By the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We talk in Nigeria about men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa. We talk about men and women like Apostle Babalola. We talk of men and women who did mighty and terrible things. Those men confessed themselves that they were powerless except for the Holy Spirit. You read about God's generals. Catherine Kuhlman, M.P. Semple McPherson, William Seymour, the white eyed evangelists that turned their cities upside down. These men and women were ordinary people. Maria Woodward Eater, very ordinary. And yet they met the Holy Spirit. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? The Holy Spirit is not wind. The Holy Spirit is not anointing oil. The Holy Spirit is not some church emblem. He is a real personality that by faith and hunger you can step into a dimension of relationship with Him whose benefit can be proven in your lifetime. The Holy Spirit is not a preacher's advocacy. No. Hear me, Plato. The Holy Spirit is not for men of God. The Holy Spirit is for those in government. The Holy Spirit is for career people. The Holy Spirit is for family people. Don't ignore him. Jesus did not ignore him. When God sends you, Isaiah 48 and verse 16, He never sends you alone. Let me give someone a word of hope as we prepare to pray. When he sends you, he never sends you alone. The B part of this verse says, It says, The Lord God and His Spirit have sent me. The Lord and His Spirit have sent me. Just because you cannot see him does not mean he's not real. The only way to understand the Holy Spirit is to understand marriage. When two people are about to get married, a gentleman and a lady, they ask them questions. Will you take this one? They don't even listen to what they are saying. They just say yes so that they finish the meeting. And the meaning of that is that there is a covenant that binds them. Watch what happens. That as soon as that lady becomes married to that man, she no longer bears her son name. She's under the influence of that man. Now watch this. Even if she were a cleaner and she marries a CEO, she becomes a CEO's wife immediately, not later. What you think or don't think is irrelevant. Are we together now? Let's say a billionaire or a millionaire is in this place and the wife just walks up here and says i donate one billion whether she discussed with her husband or not is their issue to settle at home as far as we are concerned the journalist will narrate it this way his eminence or his excellency or his whatever represented through his able wife donated one billion is that true that means the wife never went alone she went and carried his name she carried his reputation with her and even though he may not like what she did, he has to defend his reputation because he's her husband. It will be irresponsible of him to leave his wife. Listen to me. Are you understanding what I'm telling you now? So she's now called Mrs. His name. And on the strength of that, she can make decrees. She may not have up to a million naira in her account. Yet she will make decrees that are bigger than her size. Trusting his reputation to defend it. 
Hear me. This is what happens with our ministry with the Holy Spirit. We are ordinary people in ourselves. But you are that bride. There is a faithful husband that backs you. Man of God, don't go to that crusade ground alone. You will be disappointed. There is a betrothal. There is a marriage that has happened. When you speak, you don't speak alone. When you cast out devils, they obey because the jealousy of your husband is defending your statement. Hear me. The secret behind the mysterious results that we produce, make no mistakes about it. It is not the strength of the flesh. Jesus came to Nicodemus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are results that are not within the realm of man. You cannot produce such a result. So when I stand here, I am a man in the physical, but I am a bride in the spirit. There is a jealous husband. Walk with that consciousness and you will step into a life of signs and of wonders. Walk there as a career person. Walk there as a commissioner. Walk there as a governor. You are not just sitting down and writing. Spirit of the living God, your namesake is at stake here. I receive wisdom. I receive guidance. How dare you look at someone on a wheelchair and tell him to stand up. By what strength? How dare you look at a destiny that has been tied for ages, sometimes before you were born, and dare to announce in a moment, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's the secret. Because he had anointed. The word anointed means ordained. He has legitimized my operations. Just, you are not weak. You are only weak when you are alone. Plato states, you are not weak. Africa, it is not the color of our skin. It is not our educational limitation. It is our, res our resisting and neglecting the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hear me, Plato. My life is proof as an inspiration that if the Holy Ghost holds your hands, He will take you to the nations. He will defy all the laws of men. Is God blessing someone? Someone come, any come gentlemen. Watch this. This is me walking alone through life, confused. I come here and they say you are not this tribe. I come here and they say you are an African. I'm so limited. And then I come and hold his hands, the Holy Ghost. I hold his hands and go back to that same business. I hold his hands and go to ministry. While I'm preaching, he's with me. You are just not seeing him. So when I say in the name of Jesus, blind eyes open. It's not just my mouth. There is the jealousy of the spirit. His assignment is to see that Christ is glorified in your life. And he will shift anything to make sure that Christ is glorified. Let the way eat of your glory cover us let the light of your river flow let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us let the ways of your glory fall listen to me dear man of God you may have eloquence and oratory, but if you do not have the Spirit of God, you will still be disappointed. Dear civil servant, you may have your certificate and your training, but if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you are bound to have a plethora of frustrations. Dear family man, you may be a responsible husband and a father, but life requires more than that. Even demons know. There are certain results that the moment you see it, it's a revelation that that man is not alone. Occultists know this. Non-Christians know this. You cannot produce results beyond a certain threshold except God is with you. I was stupid enough to hold his hands and say, Holy Spirit, 
I may not have what it takes. I may not be an American, respectfully speaking. I may not be a European. I may not conform to the standards that men have put. But I'm ready to hold your hands. Someone God is speaking to you. You need to take the Holy Ghost serious. You've been having board meetings on church growth. Board meetings on increase. Thank God for those things. But nothing will replace the power that His presence brings. You can fake power. You can't fake His presence. The reality of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? He changed my life when I met the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God can take you from anywhere to anywhere. From anything to anything. Don't give me the excuse of your background. Believe me. Don't give me the excuse of tribal sentiments. Not when the Holy Ghost. If it is the genuine Holy Spirit. He will turn your life into a sign and a wonder. This is not a preacher's talk. He will bring beauty and glory out of your life. He will walk in dimensions of extraordinary results. Just when men think they have exhausted all that can come from you. Then he comes with another dimension. You will never be able to do ministry without the Holy Spirit. Plato said it will take more than formulating policies in addition to that which the members of parliament are involved with. Hear me. I speak to you by the Spirit of the Lord. As a territory, we need to one more time say Maranatha come. Spirit of the living God come. Beyond the Pentecostal phenomenon come. Come to our government. Come to our members of parliament. Come to the business people. Come to members. Come to preachers. When he comes, he brings guidance. When he comes, he brings direction. When he comes, he brings empowerment. I have many things to tell you now, Jesus said, but ye cannot bear them. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He says he will guide you. He will guide you. He will take up that which is of me and he will give it unto you. The Holy Ghost is responsible for the signs and the wonders that you see. The Holy Ghost is responsible for kingdom influence. You can be as true and as right as you are, but except the power of the Holy Ghost is upon you, you may not do much in this kingdom. For the race is not to the swift, the Bible declares. The battle is not for the song. Mm -hmm. I learned the excellency of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I forever hold his hands. My life is useless without him. He is a factor. That one factor. Bringing you into a dimension of spiritual reality. Please listen to me. We need to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is the extraordinary factor in a man's life. God making ordinary men to become supernatural. Let the Holy Spirit be involved in your business and you will be surprised what will come out of your life. Let the Holy Spirit be involved in your ministry. Believe me, I know what I am saying. Let the Holy Spirit be involved in your family and you will marvel and wonder at the superior dimensions that His presence can bring. In one minute, wherever you are, I'd like you to pray and say, Holy Spirit, I need you afresh. I need you afresh. Let it be a genuine prayer. Are you praying? I need you afresh. Hallelujah. Listen. Write this down very quickly. There are four benefits of an encounter with the Holy Spirit and we stop here for today. We'll take the other encounters tomorrow morning. 
Do the best that you can as much as God grants you grace to follow. Or be around. The first assignment of the Holy Spirit is that He is the revealer of the Word. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the Word. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 and 12. Write it down because of time. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 and 12. The Bible says, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Read on. The Bible says, verse 10 now, but God hath revealed them. So they are no longer a mystery. God had revealed them to us. How? By His Spirit. It says, for the Spirit has the ability to search all things. Yea, the deep things of God. Next verse. The Bible says, For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? So also, no man can know the things of God, except the Spirit of God. You read down to verse 12. The Bible says now, hallelujah, not later, not tomorrow, now. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God to the end that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. A revealer of the secrets and the mysteries of God. Number two, the Holy Spirit is the confirmer of the word. The Holy Spirit, it is within His office. Even though the Holy Spirit still plays a role in your new birth experience, there is a separate encounter with His office. And the Bible says He is the confirmer of the word. Isaiah 44, from verse 24 and 26. Isaiah 44, from verse 24 and 26. The key verse is verse 26. The Bible says, Can we see 26? It says, That confirmed the word of his servants. I'm hurrying up because of time. Read from 24 to 26. He says, He performs the counsel of his messengers. So if I speak like I did to this gentleman, I do not have that kind of power to impart any grace. But the Holy Ghost is a confirmer. The Holy Ghost is the seal. He validates that it's fully God that sent you. Number three, this is an important one. When you encounter the Holy Ghost, you have encountered the custodian of the anointing. The administration of the anointing is in the office of the Holy Spirit. Please listen to this. Isaiah 61, you can read that. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. Please give it to us. Just write Isaiah 61 for reference. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power, but it came by the Spirit of the Lord. Every other spiritual practice and perhaps religion does not depend on relationship for power. For instance, if you go to meet a Havalis, you don't need to know his name. He doesn't need to know your name. You don't need to know where he's from. You just tell him, I need power, maybe for some political thing or whatever it is. And he conjures something and gives you. It is only the faith life that requires relationship for power. Your power is a derivative of your relationship. Are we together? He is the custodian of the anointing. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive power, the Bible says. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, you shall receive power. Not before. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He precedes the power. That power will make you witnesses unto me. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth. Number four, the Holy Spirit represents the voice of God. Write that down. The Holy Spirit represents the voice of God to the believer. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Apostle Paul mentoring his son in the gospel Timothy. He had this to say. He says, but the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit speaketh expressly. 
that in the latter times he said some shall depart from the faith do you like prayer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint we are going to pray for a few minutes just two prayer points number one is the grace for many of you who are yet to encounter the lord jesus christ soon after this prayer i'll make an altar call before i minister and then for those who have encountered the lord jesus christ you are going to pray that the benefits of salvation he said bless the lord oh my soul forget not his benefits there are benefits you are going to pray that the benefits of salvation become real in your life and then number two the ministry of the holy spirit becomes real in your life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray just for a few minutes and we're done for tonight is someone praying all the overflows please pray those following us from all over the globe online pray this is the time to pray the benefits that come with the encounter of the son of the living god the life of god access to righteousness the reality of the workings of his grace peace that surpasses all understanding are you praying Pray for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God in a fresh dimension. I embrace you. I embrace your ministry. I embrace you. I embrace your ministry. I embrace you. I embrace your ministry. I embrace you in my ministry. I embrace you in my life. Pray. I embrace you in my business. I embrace you in leadership. I embrace you in government. You may be a politician here, yeah, pray. You may be a father in the land, pray. You may be a diplomat, a career person, an industrialist, pray. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, transforming the plateau to a sign and a wonder. Pray for your church, man of God. Spirit of the living God, I introduce you afresh to my assembly, to house on the rock church, to the body of Christ across the plateau. In a new way, let the wind of the Spirit come. hallelujah listen i believe with all my heart that god is doing something from tonight lord jesus is the way jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other Listen to me, we have but a few minutes tonight and all across this large auditorium, this, this theater, this space, the main church, all of the extensions inside and outside, there are people listening to me right now and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you that you have to win this war of destiny tonight. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Listen to me. In order of priority, the greatest and most superior encounter in your life is that encounter with the Son of the living God. Every other thing that we do here tonight and for the days that come, that follow, is absolutely inferior to this one encounter. There are people scattered across once you heard me speak the holy ghost began to convict you that it is time for you to take jesus serious it's time 
for you to make that one decision embracing the life of Jesus acknowledging his lordship this is beyond church this is beyond religion whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord he shall be saved now very quickly I am going to count one to ten and you are here you are saying apostle if you will lead me to make this noble decision I am unashamed and I'm ready to stand before Jesus I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here one are you celebrating Jesus two three Run to Jesus. Saburai Kabani Nagode Cheto Kabani Nagode. Run to Jesus. Don't be ashamed of Jesus tonight. So Jordan in a day. Go the Ian in a day. This is the part of the song I like. We sing in that song. Kaika Shale Hawaii. Come to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Now listen to me Coming to Jesus Is not like coming to a funeral No Coming to Jesus Is exchanging your weakness for his strength Exchanging your limitation for his power Every one of us who celebrate the faith life today Have to make this decision I salute every one of you and for those of you who are following online I like you to open up your heart and connect it matters that we participate in the global harvest someday Jesus is coming back I announce to you a day life will not continue like this indefinitely a day will come when the trumpet will sound I assure you it will happen I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. One more time and I lead you to this prayer. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Now listen to me.
all of you who are standing here my god such a strong presence of the holy spirit i'd like you to lift your right hand here at house on the rock joss and i want to lead you to jesus the bible declares that whosoever comes to him will not perish regardless the past regardless the limitations jesus gives us new life i want you to say this prayer from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem jesus is right here at this crusade ground are you ready to pray very loud and very clear to your own hearing say after me lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you were raised up for my justification this night i make jesus my savior my lord and my king i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness into my spirit and i declare based on the authority of scripture that from tonight and forever i am a child of god i am saved hallelujah give jesus a big hand clap years ago i remember watching reinhard bunker of blessed memory making this decision i was somewhere in the crowd when he was making that call and today he's joining the cloud of witnesses in heaven and seeing as this noble ministry continues even after his departure listen to me you have made the noblest decision in your life and i congratulate you in the name of the lord jesus christ now very quickly there are a group of counselors please can you wave your hands now the counselors are waving their hands there are a number of you but all of you in concert i want you to obediently follow the man leading you you're going to be taken somewhere you may be given a few materials and then they'll just admonish you for a few minutes and you quickly join us god bless you let's honor them plateau just is this the best you can do celebrate them as they as they go I have a few minutes we'll soon be out of here I want to pray and speak over someone's life yes yes Sing it for me. Come Celebrate Jesus. I'm about to pray for you. Now, in one minute, I'd like you to pray. Everything that must leave your life this night, not tomorrow, this night, 
here at this 19th anniversary please believe i'd like you to open your mouth in one minute and pray lift your voice and pray that one thing that must live your life for sure it says say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you lift your voice and pray Glad to pray. North Central pray. Nigeria pray. Africa pray. Call unto me and I will answer, the Bible declares. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. hallelujah now this is what will happen we still have other days so we're not going to delay but we have a few minutes and i just feel third in my spirit just to speak a prayer and then whatever happens tonight i may not have the time to prophesy and speak because our time is done and we have to respect time so that we're back to our homes but then i know that someone will leave this place completely transformed. There is power in the name of Jesus. There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Now I want to pray. Please do me a favor. Whoever falls under the anointing close to you, if you can do me a favor, whether you're an usher or not, please bring them here. We have just five minutes. Praise the Lord. There are people here who are under oppressions of darkness. Listen to me. My Bible declares. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that He may destroy, annihilate, liquidate. Don't just come out at random. Praise the Lord. I want to pray for you. And the moment I pray for you, inside, outside, everywhere, the power of God will come and bring life and liberty. For the Bible says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, it says. And that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Are you ready to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, when I'm praying, I'm going to give you an instruction to shout that name, Jesus. And as you shout that name that is above every other name, every demon and every devil on the plateau that will not let you rest must give way. Lord, I pray that you honor your word. Here at House on the Rock, here at just plateau, it's time to experience liberty. Therefore, I declare, in the name of Jesus, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us the bible declares that he nailed it to his cross therefore we place a sanction in the realm of the spirit to principalities and powers ordinances of darkness tying down the destinies of men it's time for you to go at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus as you shout that name every chain that has held you bound must let you go are you ready to shout one two three shout jesus i command those chains go 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 in the name of jesus bring them out i cause yokes of darkness in the name of jesus every oppression bring them out my god shake it take it take it out families must be delivered right now bring them out in the name of jesus every victim of oppression of darkness hear the word of the lord i come by the apostolic and the prophetic and i declare in the name of jesus be delivered now for upon mount zion help them 
there shall be deliverance and holiness every spirit tying down any destiny any spirit tying down families it's time for you to go Shanda Branda Skalika Posiata and Brakate, help them please. Don't allow them to disturb our, our excellencies here, please. Let's have a few protocol people just stand to make sure that they do not. Miss. Hallelujah. Now, listen, listen, look up, please. Hear me. There are families under the sound of my voice. It looks like nobody is able to rise. Just when you are about to rise, there are powers that bring you down. But right now, in the name of Jesus, any family under any kind of captivity, right now, I command those powers, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken. Be broken. Bring them out. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18. Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, I saw four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, so that no man doth lift up his head. Psalm 3. He says, How many are they that rise up against me? Many are they that say, Where is your God? He said, But thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me. He calls him my glory. I prophesy again. The power of God is coming upon you. Any family here, under the sound of my voice, that have been oppressed by spirits, I'm saying it again. Be delivered right now. Release their destinies now. Release their families now. Someone open your mouth in one minute. Begin to declare. I'm a child of God. Everything stolen from my life. I command recovery. Relationships. Opportunities. Are you praying? Please don't be silent. And I will restore to you the years. Declare. My family. Pray, we're wrapping up. We're exalting Jesus in this place. I pray for everyone who is out here. Every spirit that has tied your life. You know my voice. I come as one sent by Elohim. In the name of Jesus at the count of three. Get out of their lives now. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Out of their destinies. Out of their destinies. Out of their families. We give you worship. Worship. The highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. So we bow down, we bow down, the highest praise to the King. So we lift up holy hands, the highest praise to the King. So we mark our sujada. Hallelujah. Please look at me. We are not just wasting time here. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that these people return me. He said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Let me speak to you. Every door that has refused to open over your life, I come tonight by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I speak to every closed door. Hear the word of the Lord. Ephata, be open. Hida and Tita. Doors of opportunity. Be open now. Every closed door. Be open now. 
doors in ministry, doors in business, be open now. Including those I'm seeing outside, outside the building there. I command those doors open in the name of Jesus. Hear me. For everyone that has come for this meeting, between now and tomorrow morning, believe me, I stand by the God of my covenant and I declare you return with strange testimonies. Hear me. For many of you, you will go to bed this night and the secrets of your destiny will be open to you. The Lord will show you your place in destiny. For some of you tonight, you are receiving divine direction. It will come in dreams and visions. Now, let me prophesy. If there is any power on the plateau fighting the gospel, if there is any power on the plateau fighting the advancement of men, all oh, earth, I speak to you. I speak to the elements of the supernatural. Let tonight be a night of judgment. And every family that is yet to, to experience liberty on the plateau, I declare by the Spirit of God, it begins from tonight. In the name of Jesus. All of you who are out here, I declare you completely delivered by the Spirit of grace. In Jesus' name. The encounter with the Word of God. The encounter with the Word of God. John chapter 1 and verse 1. Very quickly, the Bible says, In the beginning was the word and the word was with god and he said the word was god he says the same was in the beginning with god so the bible starts by telling us the word was with god in the beginning now listen even though jesus the person is called the word there is the word of god as the compendium of the methodologies of the kingdom the word of God as the compendium of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. So when I talk about this third encounter, I'm not just talking about an encounter with the son of the living God that leads to the new birth experience. I'm talking about an encounter with the logos of God. The word that is translated word is the Greek word logos and it means the thoughts of a man thoughts of a man that seek expression Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet began to lament and he said my people are destroyed they perish for the lack of knowledge for the lack of knowledge Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 I hope you're writing the scriptures down Ephesians chapter 4 I just quote it quickly for time's sake Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he was attempting to diagnose their spiritual condition and he said this having their understanding darkened he says been alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them hallelujah as important as being saved or born again as we know it to be is when you are saved and you just stop at that realm you will never be able to attain stature and maturity in the kingdom in fact the bible says it is because of god's commitment to our maturity that he gave on to some apostles he gave on to some prophets evangelists pastors and teachers he says for the perfecting the word perfecting there is the word maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured would do the work of the ministry to the end that we all as a corporate body we come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ it says not to to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive are we together so an encounter with the word of God is an encounter
encounter with the mysteries of the kingdom please say after me the mysteries of the kingdom one more time can you shout it say the mysteries of the kingdom in matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus is teaching teaching a crowd just as this and he was introducing them to the lifestyle of the kingdom he began his discourse in what we know theologically to be the beatitudes opening them up to the way the kingdom function and he said 13 verse 11 matthew he said because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven so in this kingdom we excel and we reign on the strength of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom that we know there is a dimension of jesus called jesus the way he said i am the way i'm not only the truth and life i am the way god's authorized method jesus the way and if you do not encounter the word of god you will never be able to understand the principles listen carefully the patterns and the methodologies of god let me tell you something about the glory of god the glory of god is only revealed as an attestation that his patterns have been kept if you ever see the glory of god revealed in the life of an individual revealed within a territory a church a business the glory of god comes to confirm that his patterns have been kept and so if you do not understand spiritual patterns you will never be able to host or reveal the glory of god if you're with me please say amen whether it's in finances ministry career your influence every manifestation of the glory of god revealed in scripture came when his patterns were kept now look up please god in, is a god of systems that means in his character every time he's about to introduce a dimension of himself listen carefully he would demonstrate or simulate that experience once and create spiritual principles around that experience so that by engaging the principles you can make for continuity of that dimension are we together now so he made man and he made woman and he programmed a principle of reproduction are we together so that if you need more men you will not have to call on him and say come create new people you engage the principle are you getting me now so you can be born again and yet your life will never capture the riches that are in christ because you have encountered the son of god you have even encountered the spirit but you have not encountered the logos there is an encounter with the word of god the result of this encounter with the word of god is what leads to what we call dominion you may have heard me say it again that dominion is not an impartation there is no anointing for dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of the kingdom this gives you authority the greek word exousia capacity to legislate are we together now encounter with the word of god colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 paul was speaking to the church in Colossae, and by extension the body of christ he said it this way let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom that the word of christ dwell in you richly and in all wisdom the word of christ can dwell in you but if it's not in wisdom you will not be able to draw it out and apply it accordingly there are many people who have access to scripture many people study their bibles but there is no methodical approach to their spiritual growth so if and when situations demand the release of the word of god they do not know how to coordinate the word of god like a system of advantage to produce victory i give you an instance the average believer does not understand the forces of redemption 
and the dimensions of victory are located to them so if you have a challenge the average believer would pray at random pleading the blood of jesus calling the fire of the holy ghost touching and agreeing taking communion laying hands on one another somehow you just suspect that one of those principles would work it's dangerous to live your spiritual life shadow boxing you can step into a level of accuracy where you know what spiritual principle is responsible for what outcome this is what is called mastery in the spirit and paul said he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully you are a blessing to the degree to which you can handle the principles and the keys of the kingdom are we in agreement this morning yes so believers have access to scripture but then many are not able to methodically study and understand the truth of god's word write this down please maybe i should just say this quickly scripture contains three things basically every time you study scripture you're exposed to three things number one promises every time you study scripture you are exposed to the promises of god tokens of his commitments to you number two every time you open up scripture you are exposed to principles these principles are hidden in stories these principles are hidden in parables listen to me if all you read in the bible is a story or a parable it has not benefited you the benefit from that scripture or that study comes when you uncover and unravel the mystery behind the story behind the parable so scripture contains promises scripture contains principles number three scripture contains prophecies We'll see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Here is a prayer now. Listen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. In fact, let's start from verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Here's what it says. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you so we know grace can be multiplied we know peace can be multiplied but the bible says through knowledge grace does not multiply through desire uh -uh. grace and peace grace in ministry grace in business every dimension of grace is knowledge dependent through knowledge of god and of jesus christ our lord verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain how many things all things that pertain unto life and godliness but it, it now comes through knowledge the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue verse 4 it says whereby are given unto us great and exceeding precious promises that by this we might be the partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust the extent of the grace that we command in this kingdom is dependent on knowledge listen you have to pray for the grace to conquer ignorance in your life ignorance is deadly it will give authorization to the devil and his cohorts to destroy you and destroy your ministry john 1 verse 5 says the light shineth in darkness and darkness comprehended it not so the kingdom is a compendium 
of infinite possibilities but those possibilities depend on knowledge listen in this kingdom there is a principle that governs kingdom wealth and abundance there is a principle that governs restoration there is a principle that governs influence there is a principle that governs being anointed there is a principle that governs longevity it's not enough to just claim them arbitrarily you must understand the principles that lead to that outcome are we together i give you an example you're trusting god to live a meaningful life there is a principle that is responsible for a meaningful life deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it leaves you with a promise that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 says this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to not just to say to do all that is written therein it says then and only then you will have good success so to just claim good success arbitrarily is making a mockery of your destiny you must understand the requisite spiritual principles the encounter with the word is god speaking to us there are so many things that happen in our lives and we console ourselves sociologically by saying how can they ally Ashiria? have you heard that kind of statement it looks very sociologically comforting but let me tell you god has no business with many things that are happening to many people it, we we are receiving the fruits of our ignorance ignorance has a cost it can cost you your lifetime it can cost you your relevance it can cost you your influence the bible tells us in jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 the will of god for us is not left in the dark i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord he says they are thoughts of good or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end we need to trust god for the grace to become like spiritual archaeologists searching for the mysteries of the kingdom the principles of the kingdom that are responsible for the outcomes that we desire i give you another example are you still getting blessed this morning many people sir especially at this time of you know recession across the globe and then the pandemic has brought a lot of um um a lot of setback for many people especially financially now you're trusting god for increase wishing and claiming and complaining and getting angry at blessed people will not produce that result you have to go back to scripture the manual for effective living and find out god's idea the bible says it this way isaiah 51 it says look unto abraham your father and to sarah your mother that birdie it says i called him and i blessed him and i increased him that means understudy his life as my idea of what it means to be blessed are we together then you begin to study the principles of scripture and you see scattered through scripture the keys that control the blessing of the lord upon the life of an individual then you begin to study truths like there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Then the Bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true? You begin to study scriptures like he that walks with the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools, the Bible says, shall be destroyed. Then you begin to learn that there is favor as an equation for success in the kingdom exodus 3 and 21 the bible says i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty now when you find that truth you obtain grace to walk in keeping with the conditions 
that release a blessing. Apostle, it looks like everybody does not like me. It looks like all the helpers of my destiny are not here to help me. I sympathize with you. But that is not a correct statement. Because the Bible says, whoever wants friends, you must sow that seed of friendship by becoming friendly. Are we together now? There is a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ. Please listen to me. Well-intentioned people, sincere people, respectfully speaking, there are so many well-meaning believers across the plateau becoming victims of situations and circumstances and many people get angry and offended with god why should i have this kind of treatment i love jesus with all my heart i'm a believer you will say i'm a christian i go to church it takes more than going to church it takes more than getting born again you must encounter the word of god the methodologies of the kingdom then you will learn his ways in fact prophet micah prophesied that in the last days the mountain of the lord shall be exalted above other mountains and above other hills and he said all nations will flow through it he says they will tell one another come let us go to the mount of the lord to the house of jacob he says and there he will teach us his ways that is what we are going to learn he will teach us his ways you know how the disciples became apostles it was not just by impartation services for three and a half years they were immersed in a body of spiritual information it took only one day for their impartation but it took three and a half years the anointing will you thou anointest my head not my cup what needs the miracle is my head and i see the result of what happened on my head through my cup we need knowledge we need knowledge colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 apostle paul again praying over the church in Colossae. he prayed to the father that they might be filled with the knowledge of his will number one number two all wisdom number three spiritual understanding and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise even unto salvation i'm trusting that in this first service the lord will plant in us an appetite for scripture not learning to preach not learning just to preach in a conference this is for your life they are life to those who find them the bible says and health to their flesh I detest ignorance and I'm not ashamed of any area where I'm in ignorance in fact many times I pray and I tell the Lord reveal to me the areas of ignorance in my life so that I can contend for light we rise in this kingdom by light Apostle Paul said I went up by revelation we go up by revelation not desire desire only pushes you to the place where you begin to engage revelation according to proverbs 18 and verse 1 it says through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom desire separates you but it is knowledge that gives you authority in this kingdom are we blessed there are three blessings that come to the life of any believer when you encounter the word of god number one the first blessing you receive is the blessing of understanding write that down please understanding the fortitude to comprehend luke chapter 19 and verse 42 when you read that scripture the bible says jesus stood and wept over jerusalem he said oh jerusalem jerusalem if only you had known in this thy day the things that make for your peace he says but now they are hidden from you understanding is a real miracle Luke 
Luke chapter 24 and verse 45. Please give it to us. Understanding. The Bible says, Then open ye their understanding that they might understand scripture. I think we should turn this verse into a prayer in one minute. Lord, open my understanding. I'm tired of looking but not seeing. I'm tired of hearing but not comprehending. I'm tired of shadow boxing my way through destiny. Grant me accuracy of perception and understanding. Is someone praying? You came to church. I was glad, he said, when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because you learn the ways of God. You do not learn the ways of God in a bank. You do not learn the ways of God in a parliament. The church is the only authorized institution that can mentor and culture believers. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, grant me understanding. Grant me understanding. Hallelujah. Look at me. Spiritual understanding is a miracle. Just because you are educated in as much as secular education is concerned does not mean you understand spiritual things. Do not confuse secular education and enlightenment with spiritual understanding. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. Let me show you an interesting scripture. Isaiah 29 and 11. Is it possible that we read it together? Can you see from where you are seated? All right, let's try. One to read. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Read on. Which men deliver to one who is learned? What's his reply? Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot. Why? For it is sealed. Not closed. Sealed. Just because the Bible is open does not mean that the seals have been broken. It can be open and yet it is sealed. Next verse. Verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not even learned in the first place. So there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned have to depend on the Holy Spirit. He's the one who opens you up to scripture. Interpreting scripture just from an intellectual standpoint will only lead to legalism and confusion because when you read the bible from an intellectual standpoint let me tell you what you will meet you will meet a plethora of confusing statements you will meet a plethora of statements that cancel out one another at the end of it you will hate what you are reading because what you see here is not just a book like a novel it's a mystery that is encoded in a book and the holy spirit will have to open your eyes that you may behold the wondrous things out of his law are we together yes so understanding number two very quickly as we prepare to wrap up the second blessing that we get from an encounter with the word is faith bible faith is a product of an encounter with the word of god Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Faith. Faith. Romans 10 and verse 17. It says, So then faith cometh. Wow, look at me. Paul personifies faith. Faith is alive. Like a messenger, it can come. That means until it comes, you don't have it. Faith cometh. There is something that calls faith into your life. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh. It can come to your life. It can come to your ministry. It can come to your business. But it comes by hearing. Bible faith. Listen to me. I submit to you. With every sense of responsibility and every sense of respect many of the things that we practice that we call faith is not bible faith believe me when i tell you this this is an uncomfortable truth but it is true 
most of the things that we do the bible does not call that faith real faith works real faith produces results let me define for you what faith is based on scripture and my experience faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word the name given to the action not the believing believing is not faith it is part of the process of faith if all you do is believe your faith is not complete you have to understand this most of what we do is believing then we speak no that's not faith faith is the name given to the action you take that action of obedience derived from your understanding derived from your conviction look at this let me have one gentleman can i use you sir come watch this please stand here everyone look at this as far as your eyes can see hold this sir this is what you're looking for the handkerchief are we together now here's what many of us do in the name of jesus this is my handkerchief you are not lying it was destined to reach you in the name of jesus this is my handkerchief are we together now and while we are saying this the condition that was meant for receiving that handkerchief we don't find out what it is and we just said this is my handkerchief five years this is my handkerchief 15 years this is my handkerchief you are not lying but it doesn't mean you have it and someone comes sir. someone will come from behind and while he's saying this is my handkerchief he's walking and in two months he will pick what for 15 years you kept watching now you get angry and you say this is not fair for 15 years i've been seeing this no just believing and speaking will not give you your result this is a deliverance for someone until action is engaged you have not manifested faith every promise in the scripture has conditions attached to it until those conditions are fulfilled you have not committed god's integrity please understand this just the awareness of the possibilities does not bring its manifestation you must know the requisite condition attached to it there are conditions there are conditions are we together thank you sir thank you so it's not enough to just see what is yours in christ and speak what is yours in christ you must take it a step further to find out this is the benefit of meditation you are not done meditating until your responsibility your participatory responsibility is revealed if you do not find your responsibility you have not done meditating meditation is not just to make you aware that this is yours every dimension of result in the kingdom will require a role to play there is a participatory role that you have to play the cheapest of the blessings in the kingdom as far as receiving is concerned is salvation and even that one is not imparted to you automatically the gift is free but it must be received based on a condition that with your heart you will believe unto righteousness and then verbalize your commitment by making jesus lord so whilst an altar call is made for instance if you remain there and hope and wish you are saved you will still go to hell even though the substitutionary sacrifice of christ is a reality but it may not be a reality in your life hear me the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled in heaven no not your life in heaven it takes faith and the operation of the word for it to become a reality in your life so jesus teaching us to pray said this when you pray say your kingdom come by your will being done in earth as it is in heaven 
we must trust God for grace if there is anything to take home in this morning service is that there is a responsibility component as far as dominion in this kingdom is concerned it is true that God can answer prayer but just believing he will answer prayer just because you are in trouble the Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him not them that are in trouble just because you are in trouble does not mean you will experience his salvation you must call upon him that's the condition attached to receive his help call upon me he said and I will answer then I will show you great and mighty things if you do not call upon him he has to respect your will it's safe to assume you do not need his help are we blessed yes let me give you an assignment please go back home and write all the dimensions of the kingdom the dimensions of results and spiritual possibilities that you seek to step into and through meditation and prayer to study of the bible primarily and then relevant materials find out the conditions connected to that promise and then obtain grace from god to work in keeping with those conditions let me tell you this truly speaking when you fulfill the conditions allocated for the manifestation of a promise there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to stop you from entering that truth are we blessed finally and then we pray what is the third blessing that follows an encounter with the word of god stability write it down stability isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6 says wisdom and knowledge he says shall be the stability of your time your life is as stable as the knowledge and the wisdom that you have when you are perturbed by the vicissitudes of life is proof that you are not grounded yet in fact here's how apostle paul puts it please give us first corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58 first corinthians 15 58 therefore my beloved brethren look up please be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord there is a dimension of spiritual stability that you must attain and it is knowledge that gives you that stability the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it is that your strength is small the wife of job came to him at the height of his predicament and said why don't you just curse god and die and job said no though he slay me i will trust him all the days of my appointed time he said i will wait i know something about god hallelujah understanding faith and stability but i think for many believers the challenge there is the faith part because we keep doing a lot of things believing we are manifesting faith and then we are surprised and then angry that our lives do not reflect what the bible says should be if it is bible faith i will say it again it always produces bible faith produces there are many young people today respectfully speaking do you know the reason why their lives are full of tragedies the bible says honor your father and your mother in the lord that it shall be well with you and you shall have the length of days the level of dishonor that it is almost marketable to practice dishonor is the reason why many people are surrounded by ills they cannot explain because scripture cannot be broken you can be a prayer warrior you practice dishonor and watch the plethora of troubles that stand before you hallelujah you must embrace the full as far as producing results is concerned in your life 
and as we prepare to pray and wrap up this morning service in addition to your encounter with the son of god giving you life and peace then your encounter with the office and the person of the holy spirit giving you direction giving you guidance fellowship and then empowerment you need this encounter with the word of god giving you faith giving you understanding that translates into real authority in the spirit and then stability in your life so that after 10 years you don't turn back and tell us i've been pretending i don't i don't i'm not sure of what i was teaching when you do not have knowledge your christian experience will frustrate you eventually you hear a lot of people tell you look this god thing i'm not in it again we used to be serious before we used to do this i'm we mumbari you hear them say no but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day an encounter with the word of god are you blessed this morning please rise up on your feet as we pray rise up on your feet as we pray everyone my life changed when I paid attention to the Word of God I'm honored today to be used by God doing the things that is doing through my life and our ministry across the globe because the Word of God is the maker of men the word of God is the maker of destinies. Listen to me. For many of you, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you through this sermon this morning. You need to get back to the place of the word. You need to reduce your time of running around men. You need to reduce your time of activities and stay with the word. Stay with the word. Let it build you. I commend you to God, he says, and to the word of his grace which is able to build you and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified two prayer points and we're done number one father open me up to the word of god grant me grace passion are you praying from the front to the back please pray passion for the word of god passion for the word of god not just religious activities I obtain grace grace to be a student of scripture I obtain grace to be knowledgeable I fight ignorance I fight ignorance from my life from my ministry I fight ignorance hallelujah um, I sat back whilst I stepped in um, I just sat quietly and such a burden came upon me and usually once the Spirit of God begins to put this burden it is because it is a response to someone's pain someone's hunger the Bible says we do not have a high priest who had not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity this is second service and there's no intention to keep us long uh, i believe that pastor is already so blessed and honored by our sacrifice standing through the weather but i assure you that every encounter that you have from yesterday up till monday would be worth any sacrifice the birth of anything valuable is painful praise the name of the lord and so whilst you're standing in one minute i'd like you to cry to the god of heaven father that which you have for me this morning i pray that i will be a full partaker of it can we lift our voices and pray
me be a partaker of it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. God bless you. I'm wrapping up the last session that I started yesterday night on encounters. And then we'll deal with something else in subsequent sessions. But this is very, very important. Um, this last segment for me was a revelation. Please listen. Let me have your attention. It was a revelation that God gave me. And the knowledge of what I'm about to teach you truly has changed my life. It's brought me to dimensions that I'm not sure I otherwise would have been able to attain. And so every time I have the privilege of teaching it across the body of Christ, I teach it with an unusual passion because it came, I didn't read it from any book, it came by the Spirit of God. And I truly believe that it sustains power. And every time the Word of God is communicated like this from such a depth of reality, I want you to believe, open up your spirit so that you can receive praise the name of the lord but before i do this something interesting is about to happen here and i want you to pay attention you don't have to stand but whether you are an usher or not please i want you to participate in what is about to happen there are people here the grace for speed listen is coming upon them and what will happen is that the hand of God will come upon them and they will begin to run physically like you know someone running by the spirit I want you if you can please bring those people out this is a ministry of signs and wonders there's nothing superstitious about what is happening in the name of Jesus there are people under the sound of my voice there are families under the sound of my voice it's a strange grace for speed I stretch my hands across the length and the breadth of this auditorium. Please bring them out very quickly. Help them, please. Bring them out. Help them. The Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he began to run. By reason of this impartation, you will be surprised that in one month, many of you will achieve things that for decades you've not been able to achieve. There is a grace that sponsors this. And I speak it upon your life. Please bring them. Please bring them. And ushers, please help them so that they don't have to litter. Some ushers should be here. You prayed and you asked him for a visitation. Jesus is not theory. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. The spirit of delay, the spirit of delay, retrogression is breaking from lives. Break, believe me, believe what I'm telling you. The spirit of delay, age long captivities of delay breaking at the instance of his word i am under the shadow of your your influence is all over me i am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me listen Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Let's listen to me. In this kingdom, there is a system of spiritual operation that if you do
do not understand you will consistently be shortchanged by the devil speed does not just happen the bible says samuel spoke to them and said it was the lord that advanced moses and aaron for all the lives and the families here represented in the name of jesus by prophecy i shift you to new dimensions and for all of you connecting in the name that is above all names whether in ministry whether in business i decree and declare be shifted to new dimensions spiritually financially step into new levels in the name of jesus hallelujah father i pray you have brought these ones to change their lives they represent themselves they represent families here at this conference this crusade we decree and declare that that which you have done remains so in the name of jesus that you will return back with testimonies you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen to your life in the name of jesus christ sir this gentleman lift your hands where you are two of you there is a grace coming on you take that grace now in the name of jesus christ you will never be the same i'm seeing that increase in ministry and in your lives the lord is shifting you to new levels by the spirit please open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray father do not leave me the way i have come i've come to the house of god please don't be distracted don't be distracted you just keep your gaze on jesus look beyond the man keep your gaze on jesus hallelujah 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 who is jonathan i'm hearing a name jonathan just i really wanted to teach and i still intend that will not stay long but i'm hearing a name jonathan who is that person jonathan you are holding a camera on your hand is there someone like that i'm seeing in the spirit you are holding a camera who is that what's his name is is the mic working please help is, is What's your name, my brother? My name is Jonathan. Where are you coming from? <laughs> it's all right. Oh Where are you God. coming from? I'm from Plateau State. Please just sit for a minute, if you can. You're from this state. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Because God is raising you to be a light to your family. This is what I'm seeing by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, I pray for you everything that represents limitations it answers to the name of jesus right now hallelujah please listen we're going to we'll be seated shortly agnes i'm hearing a name agnes you are wearing black with a necklace is it the necklace black this is what i'm seeing is there someone like that Agnes Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you are my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me your breath hallelujah this is the minister's role there are two of you please be seated there are two of you the grace for the prophetic is coming on you while you are seated there um, i just saw light a strong anointing coming on a particular man of god here in the name of jesus i decree and declare truly may you drink of that fountain a genuine grace step into new encounters in the name of jesus christ 
in the name of Jesus your ministry your life will never be the same hallelujah hallelujah pastor Sam house on the rock Gombe, the Lord is revealing to me that you are stepping into a new season of visibility this is what I'm seeing in the spirit and there will be such a display of signs and wonders this is a dimension you have so desired and the Lord is saying he's bringing into into that grace I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Christ marvelous light marvelous grace it comes upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ marvelous grace please don't think God is wasting your time God is answering age-long problems at once just to solve this thing if this is what happens in this service it was not a waste we serve a living God please listen to what I'm telling you we serve a living God God is not a theoretical religious God we serve a living God hallelujah the Lord is revealing someone to me I'm seeing your mother in Jude that's the the just university teaching hospital your mom i'm seeing a sick woman there please who is that person if if we're unable to if we're able to just deal with that then even if it's 10 minutes we do with the word that's fine but i need to minister to someone i'm seeing your mother i don't know who that person is but i need to pray for that person madam what do you do what's your name you are a pastor i need to pray for you oh there are people in the overflow goodness it doesn't matter which overflow you are you just focus on your screen and believe god believe god the lord is still ministering to me there's someone your mother is sick who is that this gentleman where is she in the hospital what's your name huh who is Japheth? i'm hearing the name yes, Japheth. Sir. yes sir. what's your name Japheth. Stand up. because the lord wants to do a miracle not only for your mother but for your family yes sir in the name of jesus Capron. this is oppression no the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power he says he went about healing all they that were oppressed every sickness is an oppression and in the name of jesus here at this conference i stand in agreement with the pastor the angel over this house and i declare unto mama we speak let there be a miracle right now let there be a miracle and even for you my friend let there be a supernatural miracle for you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus i'm seeing a gentleman you used to work in a bank something happened i don't know if it was an issue and was it that you were relieved let me just talk to you you'll be the last person you are wearing brown with a face mask a nose of face mask who is that make sure you don't please verify so that you don't think we're lying what's your name sir who is samuel i'm the one sir. samuel yes what sir. bank first bank sir. first bank yes, when sir. were you relieved 2018 sir the lord himself is honoring you i'm saying that this is an oppression you are a very sincere person but there is something that comes on you and misrepresents you let me use him and prophesy to someone in the name of jesus anyone conspiring with dark powers manipulating your life and your destiny in the name that is above all names i declare them out of your life out of your life shout a believing amen out of your life sir the bible says believe the lord your god don't cry so shall you be established he said believe his prophets so shall you prosper i stand by the grace of god and i say it in the open not in the secret that in the name of jesus christ may the lord restore your honor double fold in the name of jesus christ sir this man the man holding the mic i know you are holding a mic for someone but god wants to speak to you the lord is saying i should tell you that the book of remembrance is open over you what do you do sir 
you are a businessman are you a businessman sir i'm seeing the month of may june july these are strange months of increase and this will come by the spirit of god it is the book of remembrance the bible says that night the king could not sleep i'm praying for someone in the name of jesus whatever has made you forgotten i stand by the grace of god and we open unto you the book of remembrance in the name of jesus christ i speak over your business and in the name of jesus christ sir i'm praying that not only will god restore but god will lift you may june july this month will be strange months of increase for you in the name of jesus and our auntie the pastor may god grant you grace multiplied grace for intercession multiplied grace in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a woman here this is one two three four five years you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb your time has come who is that person five years the lord is showing me five years you're trusting god for the fruit of the womb let's just settle this please if they can go back to their seats god bless you ladies and gentlemen five years you're trusting god for the fruit of the womb who is that person please let me just pray for you quickly now the lord is that spirit where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty look at me my dear look look what is happening to her this is a, a a lady that has been oh dear i'm praying for you may you carry superior dimensions of his presence so that you can be a blessing to people listen the world is tired of noise the world is tired of noise we need to be carriers of divine presence carriers of divine realities i write these things to you O excellent theophilus of all that jesus began to do and teach now you imagine please don't be embarrassed but you imagine what these families may be going through imagine some of the things that they you imagine what happens this is africa and you know what happens naysayers false visions people who come with all kinds of things but there is a name that is above every other name yes there is i want to pray for you my dear sisters listen to me i assure you there is a god that sits in heaven don't be too used to pain god is able to roll that report i pray for you and i want you to believe in this prayer i know that many people have prayed for you but you see every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it i pray for you in the name of jesus if there is any operation of witchcraft responsible for this as i'm speaking to you right now except god is not god those chains must be broken i declare now chains be broken 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 according to the time of life i prophesy to you return with your children return with your children return with your children by this time 2022 you return with your children in the name of jesus regardless the medical condition we veto it by the power of the word and we decree and declare that only the counsel of god will come to pass in the name of jesus please be seated god bless you god bless you please do not miss especially tomorrow night i emphasize again the lord wants to bring us visitations and our hearts must be open to receive for those who can they can return back to their seats and then while i'm teaching please if anyone is under the anointing you don't have to bring them just help them so they don't injure themselves praise the lord i spoke about encounters and levels of encounters please do well to get the teaching for yesterday 
and then the first service this morning because the bible says to buy the truth money is not the only currency passion is currency hunger is currency you can use hunger to buy the truth you can use passion commitment to buy the truth in the name of jesus christ my dear just lay your hands on her just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let there be peace right now and in the name of jesus christ let everything be over praise god thank you that's all right so we began to discuss the subject of encounters how that if you want to excel in this kingdom not only ministry but in the kingdom that your excelling depends on the kinds and the levels of spiritual encounters are we together and then i began to share with us levels of spiritual encounters according to job chapter 42 do not forget that scripture in verse 5 job said i have heard of you with the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee i have heard of you with the hearing of the ear but now my eye seeth thee and i spoke yesterday about the encounter with the son of the living god apostle john told us he said this is the record that god hath given us eternal life but he structured the administration of eternal life such that until you encounter the son you cannot have that life you cannot bypass the son and route through an angel or route through a man of god to have eternal life it has to be the encounter with the son that gives eternal life are we together and i told us the blessings that follow that encounter the life of god access to righteousness access to the grace of god then we discussed yesterday about an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit i told you that the holy spirit as a person you can have an encounter with him hallelujah it says not by might not by power but by my spirit the possibilities that we command in this kingdom are a product they are a derivative of a relationship i did say yesterday that every other religion and every other spiritual practice does not demand relationship when you go to a herbalist he does not need to know your name you do not need to know his name you do not need to know the tribe all he needs is what are you here for and if he can give you what you're here for that's fine that's all right but when you come into the faith life god demands a relationship and that the power and the possibilities that you command are out of that relationship are we together now yes and that we stand to benefit guidance direction and empowerment i did tell you that the holy spirit is the revealer of the word i have many things to tell you the bible declares but ye cannot bear them now jesus is speaking he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth the spirit of god the spirit of grace the spirit of truth hallelujah yeah. that the holy spirit is also the confirmer of the word the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following then i said the holy spirit is the custodian of the anointing the administration of spiritual power resides in the office of the holy spirit he's not only the custodian of it he's the administrator of the anointing praise the name of the lord yes and then this morning we spoke about the encounter with the word of god not just as the person jesus the word of god as a compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom the methodologies of the kingdom jesus the way there is a dimension of encounter that reveals it exposes you to the principles of the kingdom i told you that the bible primarily contains three things number one promises number two principles number three prophecies so every time you study scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise it says unto salvation 
that maturity in the kingdom depends on your encounter with the word dominion in the kingdom depends on your encounter with the word knowledge of the methodologies of the kingdom and i told us in the first service that the challenge with most believers is that we have random spiritual informations that are not sequentially arranged in a way and a manner that can produce victory in our lives so we know that the blood of jesus works we know that the name of jesus works we know the fire of the holy ghost we know about communion we know about the seed and we engage them at random with no mastery of what spiritual principle is responsible for what outcome paul admonishing his son in the gospel timothy said if a man strives for mastery he says that man is not crowned until he strives lawfully every outcome in this kingdom has spiritual principles that lead to it god is a god of systems and what he does is that he introduces that spiritual reality and then he creates systems around it for continuity are we together praise the name of the lord so we challenged ourselves in the first service that we must contend for specific spiritual knowledge if your church for instance as a man of god is not growing just arbitrarily believing that i'll just pray and fast at random no 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 that may not be the solution the bible says proverbs 18 and verse 1 through desire it says a man having separated himself he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom we must be able to study the spiritual principles that are responsible for what outcome are we together and in this final session here at the second service i want to teach on the last encounter this one has changed my life and i pray in the name of jesus that it will affect you like it did me in jesus name encounter with the body of christ the fourth encounter that every one of us would require if you must excel in this kingdom it's not only an encounter with the son it's not only an encounter with the spirit it's not only an encounter with the word you need an encounter with this mystery entity called the body of christ mm. the body of christ is a very mysterious entity jesus himself began to speak the first time the word church will be mentioned in the bible the ecclesia he said who do men say that i am so the revelation of the church was a strategy to end confusion they were not clear about his identity who do men say that i am some said you are elias some said you are one of the prophets and he said okay you've worked with me what is your verdict who do you think i am and peter the bible says speaking by the spirit he said i know who thou art thou art christ the son of the living god and he said flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven and he says thou art peter and upon this rock the rock is not peter the rock is this strategy upon this strategy i will build my church and i will build it in a way and a manner that the gates of hell will not prevail against it so the church is not just a building please listen carefully the church is not even just people the church is a spiritual strategy the only strategy that is able to fulfill the agenda of the father is called the church the church is more than a people the church is more than a building the church is a spiritual strategy invented by the intelligence of god himself the only platform that is able to host god the only platform that is able to advance the kingdom the only platform that is able to communicate this global harvest is called the church and you need an encounter with the body of christ work with me let's look at a few scriptures number one first corinthians please chapter 11 first corinthians chapter 11 we'll begin to read from verse 23 but the verse of emphasis is 27 down to 30. a little background please paul it, this was at a point where paul was on his voyage carrying out his apostolic ministry 
and the church in Corinth at this time was experiencing such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit there were signs wonders baptisms miracles administrations of several dimensions and there was a very big confusion in the church there was a mix of several things people who were taking the wine for communion and they were getting drunk people who were prophesying arbitrarily people who were having all kinds of things and Paul needed to come and bring decency and order are we together now that was the whole idea behind first and second Corinthians to the end that all things be done decently and in order and in order for him to do that he now had to sit them down in a conference and then compartmentalize the operations of the Holy Spirit and give meaning to the experiences they were having because they didn't know the name of what they were having was called word of knowledge word of wisdom it was Paul who began to define to give names and compartmentalize these operations he was an amazing man and in one of his discourse please back to the scripture he now brought a mystery of the Lord's body the table and the cup for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you so we know where it came from that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread uh-huh and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take it this is my body take note which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me 25 and after the same manner he took the cup when he had supped, he said this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me 26 for as often as ye eat this bread and ye drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he comes now the mystery is unveiled from 27 wherefore is a caution now whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the lord unworthily he shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the lord understand what he's saying here 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup 29 the bible says whoever eats and drinks unworthily he will eat and drink damnation to himself and the sin that he has done is not discerning the lord's body as a result of this verse 30 he says many are weak look at this now as a result of this sin of not discerning the lord's body many not few are weak many are sickly and many do sleep if the bible says many it means many that means there are lives today that are limited there are lives today that are weak there may be ministries that are weak simply because they could not discern the lord's body now he was not talking about bread wafers and wine those were just emblems he was talking about his body are we together now that even though i am the head i have a body that you must discern and failure to discern the body of christ it would cost your destiny it would cost your church it would cost your ministry what is in the body of christ the body of christ listen to me is the only entity that can host the possibilities of god the body of christ is not a church the body of christ is the collective group of believers together you have to understand this now i'll explain a few things and i pray that god will grant us the grace to understand please look up the way god works with us is that he reveals himself dimensionally you have to understand this god is almighty he is i am but when it has to do with the revelation of himself he fragments himself into dimensions and reveals to people are we in agreement on that so if you are oral roberts he will reveal that rafa dimension as the healing god are we together if you are benny Hinn, you will know him as savior 
several dimensions and the way god deals with us is that when you begin your spiritual journey you usually will begin on a neutral ground but as you progress god will now begin to shift you to the area of your call and the area of your calling the area of your commissioning will demand certain trainings are we together so say for instance there are two gentlemen can i use you again thank you let's have one more person we have to hurry up so we end on time thank you watch this thank you watch this gentlemen let's assume that these gentlemen began their spiritual journeys together are we together praying maybe fasting if this man has been ordained to be a prophet and this man has been ordained to be an evangelist somewhere in the course of their training the holy ghost is now going to begin to customize his dealings with them you will find out that two of them will not be able to work together again because the context of their trainings will change this man is called into the prophetic chances are that an unusual release of the grace for prayer will come upon him even more than what this man would experience so there will be problems because when they pray after three hours this guy is tired he wants to go home but this guy is just about to start because he will need to labor to be able to obtain that grace are you seeing now something is happening to their trainings at the end of it this man will get the prophetic grace this man will be an evangelist but now here's where the problem is there is a side effect to the way god trains us and he left it intentionally the side effect is that when god is focusing on your area of call he usually will not introduce you to other dimensions that are there but it does not mean those dimensions will not be needed in your life listen carefully so while this man is learning the prophetic the holy ghost will not tell him anything about administration the holy ghost will not tell him anything about excellence the holy ghost will not tell him anything about leadership the scope of his training is prayer fasting warfare the prophetic revelation are you seeing this just as an example if this guy starts a ministry only with that dimension very soon the area he has neglected will start showing in his life are you getting blessed now whilst god is building him in the area of the prophetic there is another person who god is building in the area of administration and excellence if this man is not careful all he will have is intellectual knowledge and a passion for excellence he would downplay prayer he would downplay fasting he would downplay the prophetic he will also start an organization that is excellent but full of demons excellent but full of sickness excellent but full of all kinds of failure so here's what god did he will fragment himself and reveal to you but leave you with an assignment to connect with the larger body for the other part of what you do not have are you getting that now you have to understand this so if this man acknowledges that as powerful as my dealing is that is not all there is to god he can now honor this man for learning administration now administration has been added to his prophetic he can now have a healthy church that prophesies and is still excellent hearing is where the devil has deceived many of us because because of the strength of the result that comes from your training and the pride of men we usually find it difficult to acknowledge all the dimensions that are not captured in our lives why because eventually come sir eventually you are going to have mentors mentees who are learning under you and they are only going to learn what is your dimension of reality are we together now and so when they see a level of excellence like this it is your assignment as a mature spiritual leader to be unashamed to tell them i will teach you the dimension given to me but don't you think that is all you should learn when you find another dimension don't fight it embrace it and add it it is the body of christ please sit down So the administrator 
mentors young people and tells them if you see all these guys praying and fasting don't mind them the only devil is the one in your mind you may be right until the real attack comes are we together now oh yes i assure you there are real attacks the realm of the spirit does not play games it's a real attack now at that point you are confused the people you are raising come to meet you and say pastor you taught us to be excellent my books are intact i did my job well i submitted the proposal why is it not working the answer is here and yet because you have not connected you will have to create a theology to explain away and tell the man maybe you are not serious many of the answers we look for are not in heaven they are already in the body of christ if only we have the eyes to discern the graces that god has put so i'm here now with a prophetic ministry prophesying but people are stealing money because there's no excellent administration you are prophesying but there's trouble you can't raise leaders are we seeing are you seeing that now yes so i go to god and say lord why is ministry not working even though i'm a genuine prophet of god the answer god will tell you he has already sent the answer the answer does not have to come to you directly but once the answer is in the body of christ it is still yours are you getting what i'm saying now yes this has been the age-long explanation of the limitations that are in the lives of very great people because for some reason and I'm, I'm saying this passionately again because this is my own state there is something called the unity of faith unity does not mean uniformity we are never going to do the same thing let me just tell you the truth however there must be a recognition and we must be unashamed to mentor the people that God is bringing to us to acknowledge the fact that we do not have all of God as far as the dispensing of truth is concerned for we see in part and we prophesy in part so when i come here so please can i use you sir i am able to hold reverend akila's hand yes even though you call me great apostle joshua selman and i am grateful but there are dimensions that if i want i must have to come to him and acknowledge the dealings of god on his life if i ignore the grace on him i will still be anointed in my area of call but suffer in other areas let me give you an instance within minutes i spoke to people here who had problems do you know there are many voices that in five minutes can end the captivity of families but because you have not discerned many of the problems that we have the answers are around the body of christ god bless you sir thank you in the body of christ there is a woman who did not go to school and yet raise 12 children and all those children are responsible you think it's just motherhood there has to be an anointing making that happen and yet there is someone else please don't feel bad struggling with two children if only you can discern that the answer it doesn't always have to be preachers this is why the gathering of the saints is powerful because you are not only receiving from the man teaching the person seated next to you may be carrying a grace that is the answer to your age-long problem it's why pride is a destroyer an encounter with the body of christ you've heard me say i'm a product of many anointings it was right here in joss that I traveled down to attend one of Reinhard Bonke's crusades I was in that crowd when I saw this man doing great things I would have said I'm a man of God too that's what we say that's the deception that keeps us small preach a very simple message and you know to those of us that God has helped a bit with the spirit of revelation there is this pride we usually will not listen if it's not deep i don't listen unfortunately renard bonke shared a simple story and he was about to take water and then minister the baptism that was the first time in my life i had a visionary encounter of the holy spirit 
something happened to me in that meeting that I would never forget today he's gone to be with the Lord if I had stayed in my pride that man would have gone today and I would not receive anything please listen to me when you receive it does not demean you you are only equipping in fact your openness to the body of Christ is proof that you really love your people because it means you want to bring dimensions to them now you see what Reverend Akila is doing by creating a platform even though it is house on the rock but you know that this program is not really house on the rock this is the body of Christ please hear me men and women of God especially respectfully speaking we must get to a point where we have a healthy acknowledgement and a communication of mutual honor for the sacrifices of one another it is true that we are not at the same spiritual level it is true that our hunger and our press is not the same but we must have a healthy regard are we blessed a woman i'm sure she may be here yesterday after the service while i was in the office she came to greet me with her two children two adorable children and i have never seen two children memorize scripture like this in my whole life she was memorizing the scripture with them they were praying for me the children i said what is this i know how long it took me to learn those scriptures and those kids were effortlessly reciting it someone is here flogging their child every day to learn john 3 16 and the child is not getting it whereas there is a grace that resides in a woman that through honor and discernment you can receive when you learn what i'm teaching you tonight no challenge will live in your life for a long time because you will search for there has to be a grace in the body of christ that can solve that problem if your problem is prayerlessness there is a grace already assigned i know what many of us want we want the credit to our name we want god to give you directly so you don't give credit to anyone but even if you are saul and you meet jesus you will still go to the house of ananias for the continuation of your training not even an encounter with jesus will ignore an encounter with the body of christ for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause there are people who have died today who should not have died don't feel bad had they met the graces assigned to them there are weak people who are not supposed to be weak today there are politicians who should never be down if only they could discern let me answer one question and we'll pray let me tell you why it is difficult to receive and i will start with an admission the admission is that the vessels that carry this grace are very very earthen and imperfect this is where the problem is because of the imperfection of the vessels are we together now yes Moses was a temperous man. I hope you know that. Very temperous man. Yet the spirit that was in him as a stammerer came on 70 elders and none of them could keep quiet. Yet that's what was in one man and he was quiet. Part of what was on him came on 70 elders and they could not keep quiet. Yet one man was carrying that grace. Elijah was an angry man you need to really clap for elijah and don't blame the sons of the prophet the sons of the prophet were being mentored by this harsh guy for disturbing him fire comes down what kind of a man is that god can't you replace him and use another one the strange thing about god is while you are hoping god does not use those vessels he has covenanted that i will still continue so if you must if you must get on to that dimension you must tap into that grace why would god not replace elijah <laughs> if you want to be elijah get ready for insults from elijah and be prepared to enjoy it the bible may not record it 
but we are matured enough to know that you cannot work with Elijah it's not just good morning every day the sons of the prophet were angry and Elijah said do what you would do I will still follow quietly so when the mantle came upon him he said finally I have it what do you want a man is living you are living and then you're the one person who had stayed with you shouldn't you be wise enough to say I love you my dear son you have served me he said quickly I'm going what do you want a double portion of your anointing you have asked a hard thing would you be angry and go back and say carry your grace and, and go to heaven with it the mystery of receiving from the body of Christ I wish I had time is hidden in the riddle of Samson Samson was going to go and see a woman and while he was going a lion attacked him is that true and he tore that lion with his bare hands and then after a week he was passing again and he saw something mysterious he saw that bees left every tree and came to a carcass and put honey there why will bees not look for fresh trees with green leaves what are bees looking for that they come to a carcass and put honey there so when he met the philistines he said i have a riddle out of something strong has come something sweet and the people could not they could not unravel it let me tell you the mystery of receiving from the body of christ you will only receive the honey if you can endure the smell of the carcass even though the carcass smells the honey is right there if you can endure the smell of the honey hear what i'm telling you this is why many people do not receive oh this pastor is a tribalistic man i agree you are not wrong but that's too small a reason to allow your destiny suffer that much adaptation is proof of honor you must learn the stamina of endurance is the reason why many young people never receive mantles because they want to be successful at their own terms listen to me many of us young people today have not been able to receive graces from our fathers even in the flesh because of our anger my father was a sad person but he was sad and still wise in his lifetime you saw his honor and yet we cannot endure and receive it we live in a generation that is obsessed with pleasure we want success to come and meet us at our own terms no sir your prayer is the person who serves your food every day called mama you have traveled to lagos you have traveled to ghana you have traveled to london looking for an anointing that mama has right in your house because she's not educated that woman wakes up 12 o'clock every day to pray till 2 she has studied for 25 years that is more than physical discipline there is a grace that makes it happen now you are a preacher and you sleep and wake up by 9 o'clock in the morning even if you sleep by 8 you will still wake up by 9 it's an attack if you go to mama and say mama even though i know i'm a celebrity man of god but i come to you recognizing that the grace i'm running around looking for you may not be educated but you have this grace mama can look at you and say my son i met a missionary in 1975 i cooked food for him and he blessed me he said you will never go down spiritually and that's the grace speaking do you know there are mantles and anointings that swim across our environment every day but our pride and lack of discernment is what has kept us small there is no reason why anyone in church should be prayerless there are enough graces and unctions and mantles to solve that problem if you have the opportunity to discern there is no reason why anyone in this state should be mediocre there are exceptional people that have been raised from the plateau to the ends of the earth have you discerned their grace there is no reason why people should be begging for food up and down 
there are people veterans in business men and women who understand the economic system of the kingdom i'm not just talking of people who are carnal no 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 for this cause many are weak this is the reason why there is a lot of prayer maybe in your assembly but there is no establishment because it is a prayer ministry but there is no communication of doctrine you have ignored the teaching ministry and laughed at teachers and says because they don't have signs and wonders that's why they teach from morning till night now you see people pray and there is a side effect to praying without the word because you'll be exposed to the realm of the spirit then you will interact with all kinds of spirits your hunger will drive you to the realm of the spirit but the word of god is not there to coordinate you so you find out that people fast for seven days and return back with strange spirits they fast for seven days and they admit them in truth because they are supposedly praying in tongues without control it is doctrine that gives balance to spiritual experiences what do you benefit from your encounter with the body of christ please sit down we have to wrap up i forgot this a morning service this kind of teachings happen with night vigils three or four hours of solid prayer another two or three hours of solid word you back it up with a serious demonstration of the spirit and even the gate of your destiny knows that you spend time with god we must trust god for grace to take god seriously in the name of jesus christ number one the first blessing the first benefit of encounter with the body of christ thank you gentlemen thank you so much is access to the multifaceted dimensions of god write it down god operates dimensionally acts chapter 18 please give us the last four verses acts chapter 18 access to the multifaceted dimensions of god god operates dimensionally the dimension you have may not be all there is he is not only rafa he is not only jaira he is not only el shaddai he is not only Sikenu, there is more. Even in heaven, he said, Come up here, there is still room for more. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, you just write it. This was the story of Apollos. The Bible tells us that Paul, having passed through the upper coast, well, he came and met this man in Ephesus called Apollos. Are we together? And the Bible says he was mighty in scripture. He was eloquent he was fervent in spirit but he knew only the baptism of john now if you if you were to be the member of apollo's church the only thing you would know is the baptism of john not wrong but incomplete so here's how the devil has deceived us we believe that single-handedly we are the ultimate custodians of all there is in god and we discourage people from embracing from the body now listen to me let me balance something i know that administratively and from the standpoint of fatherhood and leadership as a spiritual leader you owe a responsibility to make sure your people are secured your people don't vacillate around into confusion you have a responsibility john 17 jesus was praying and he said all you have given me i have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition he had to explain why john why judas was out of the 12. jesus had to give the father an explanation what happened to judas so as a man of god it's not just to say okay because the body of christ is there so you allow your members and your people to just vacillate and roam around no no however there must be an unashamedness whilst doing ministry or leadership or business to let people know sincerely that I continue to be an effective servant of God, growing and exploring the riches in Christ. However, I admit to you that all I have is not all there is. There are dimensions beyond this horizon and that I will not 
under guidance i will not hinder you from tapping into those dimensions it is selfish to allow your ego stop people from tapping into other dimensions of supply in the body and it is dangerous to consciously or unconsciously make yourself the ultimate reference no sir the best of us is only an effective member not no one individual is the body of christ house on the rock today has been used by god as that donkey that we have all had that access to and i am so honored and in the secret and in the open sincerely reverend akila has said it again and again that this is beyond the body of christ that's why they took the pain to go through all of this and set up the stage so that the body be blessed i have preached there are few churches in this nation in terms of denominations that have not preached in and sometimes i have my personal convictions as a person doctrinally speaking and based on my work with god however I submit to you and I say it with all humility there is no city no denomination that has consciously or knowing me say no 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 we're not interested in you it doesn't matter which one do you know why because when you approach people with honor knowing that you acknowledge there is a dimension of God they have they will also reciprocate by respecting what you carry but when you downplay people imagine that i came into this city with a mentality to outshine as though the men of god in this city are just playing games you will be disappointed even though you love me we never come into cities to push down and demean what god is doing rather we come by the privilege of the election of grace to be support systems to lift the hands of those who labor in doctrine day and night unity does not mean teaching the same thing that will never happen based on our work with god we have been exposed to different levels of light but is it possible that a house on the rock program can be happening and a pastor or a ministry that is not house on the rock says this is kingdom come how can i provide bosses how can i provide chairs you don't even need to announce my name i am a member of this church but i know that what god is doing is a real visitation and i will shelve my differences and see to it that christ is lifted if we do not listen to this the generation of the children coming will hate god will fight god and the devil will give them coordinated alternatives coordinated alternatives are we blessed the vessels will always remain imperfect and earthen hmm. many of you love jesus because you have not seen him in principle men always love those they have not seen i assure you if jesus walks in the flesh after one week many of you will run away from him you read about the jesus you so love are you aware of the people he flogged in the temple your jesus are you aware of the names that he called people jesus you love god's generals oh i love them go and find out those who witnessed some of their time they were persecuted and hated you love archbishop benson idahosa ask the people who worked with him i i wish you were his secretary or his pa you may almost be tempted to say finally he has gone and yet this is the man we celebrate today most times we have this seem something it will really happen if you can respect it you can get that grace and add it to your enlightenment are we together this is what i learned in my life i have received from several people graces i'm not just talking of preachers alone no i discern i was ministering in kano I'm wrapping up now 
ministering in Kano at a PFN crusade some years ago and then I'm prophesying and mighty things are happening people are just looking at me Apostle Joshua Selman and here comes this woman that I called out by the Spirit and she came out to her it was an honor to see me and yet God opened my eyes and I, I was seeing the substance of power this woman carried in the Spirit she could not even speak English very well and she told me she said every 15 days she finishes the Bible every 15 days in Hausa Hausa Bible Genesis to Revelation ah, I would be stupid to still remain a man of God at that point mama can you is it possible to pray for me a woman that can read the whole Bible every 15 days I assure you no matter how diligent you are it has to be a grace a solid grace from heaven I remember I met a gentleman who fasted for 400 days I've not fasted for 400 days many people tell lies that they fasted for this and that is only God that knows the truth but I met a man who genuinely fasted for 400 days six to six I wrapped up the last day with him and yet he was still following me for impartation I said this 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 body of Christ is mysterious here is a man fasting for 400 days and yet he's still hoping I will lay hands on him who have you ignored who did God send to you as a prayer an answer to prayer and you ignored mama may not have been a businesswoman but all through your life you never saw her back put her to shame there is a grace on her that will force blessings to come from anywhere do you not know you need that grace in the wicked world we live today everything you have you got it yourself nobody is willing to invest in your life something is wrong in this morning service we are going to pray and you are not just going to look at God and look at me you may be sitting down close to someone that you do not know the kind of grace that he or she carries let me wrap up before we pray with a very interesting story many of you may have heard who listen to my teachings this story I attended a conference many years ago and the man of God was sharing a very touching story mighty miracles happening in his church and yet he was dying in his home poverty lack failure yet people were coming to testify every week and he was one praying for them and then one time while service was going on the wife got up and walked away imagine like the wo the woman of god just gets up and walks out of this place people began to talk i hope everything is all right and he finished his counseling and rushed back home my wife what is wrong she didn't utter one word he sat down at table to eat did I offend you? I can apologize. She didn't tell him anything. The first thing he noticed was that the plates that she brought food for him was not the usual one. She took her time, got some of the best plates and she was serving him. He said, what is this? Please go and we've been married for long. Let's not do this children's thing. Bring food for me and let me eat. She didn't utter a word again. So the man became concerned. And when she brought the last item and dropped it, she looked at him and went down on her knees and said servant of god my home is in trouble you see when the man climbed the stage he was a man of god but she did not tap into that dimension of the man of god she tapped into husband so all they had was children not solutions the person you may need whose grace you have been praying for may even be your younger brother in one year he got five jobs for ten years you are still looking for one there is a grace on him but I bring you the instruction can you unravel the riddle of Samson this morning don't cry some of you are crying God is speaking to you Man of God, you would have been greater than this. If only you saw that the gate man you had, that guy prays for five hours every day.
can you endure the smell so that you will receive the good in them many of us young people when God grants us grace especially on the plateau for healings or prophecy we go back to our local churches and we insult some of the pastors no revelation this man doesn't have any revelation he's not even filled with the Holy Spirit yet he has stayed for 30 years in ministry and you are full of the Holy Ghost you are just four years old and you are about to collapse there is a grace for stability you can receive that Baba preached before you were born and he's still standing today he may not know all the Greek and Hebrew but there is a grace for sustenance he will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Hallelujah. From the day I learned this. I made up my mind as a covenant that I will never talk against anybody I made up my mind as a covenant that is not only preachers I will honor I will honor children I have learned more from children I have learned faith from children you tell a child you will buy him a toy there is no demon that will erode that memory from his mind he will come to meet you with confidence and boldness remember uncle you said you will buy me a bicycle and he puts pressure on your ego till you go and borrow money and buy that bicycle apostle they make too much noise in that church i agree can you endure the noise and receive that prophetic word apostle they don't spend time teaching they teach all kinds of things can you endure and learn other things learn fellowship learn hallelujah are we together i don't like that traditional ruler he does not like smiling can you learn leadership i don't like my mother and my father they would have given birth to me in america or uk i would have had dual citizenship now look where they came and gave birth to me you keep talking like that while the gates of destiny keep shutting over you we are going to pray the first prayer is repentance lord i repent for my sarcasm over the body of christ i have programmed woes over my life i have talked about men of god i have talked about business people i have talked about people in government listen without genuine repentance you will not see the power of god please pray now i have learned that more than an encounter with the son of god more than an encounter with the holy spirit more than an encounter with the word i need an encounter with this mystery entity called the body of christ are you praying lord i obtain mercy i have criticized excellent ministries i have criticized prayer ministries I have criticized prophetic ministries. I have criticized teaching ministries. I have criticized exceptional business people. I have criticized young people who made it early in life. I have criticized homes with well-cultured children. Pray, we are wrapping up. hallelujah hallelujah for a very long time every time I would come to this city to just visit my family in a very strange way I discovered that the moment I got home it was as if I was not a man of God again that cloak of power and grace I would no longer feel it again and one day my biological mom she was here yesterday she got angry and she got sad and said no 
this one is just not this is not just my son you are a man of god and will tap into that grace there are men today the solution to your problem is with your wife but you are just looking at her as a woman you've paid dowry over and she's blessing others and prophesying to others and yet your life is not rising same thing with women some of you your children some of you your pastors there are some of you here this man of god reverend akila you have seen what god is doing with him and some of you may just trivialize that say oh he's just lucky that's the statement of arrogance nicodemus came to jesus by night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him do you know that i came late yesterday into this city and even whilst the program was on i was shocked and amazed i'm sorry for having to say it but reverend akila I, I don't know if he left here he had to come to the hotel to come say hello just check up before he would run back i said pastor in my mind i said you didn't have to do this and then i remembered honor is the key for access who have you dishonored in the secret and in the open many of you listen to messages of men of god in the secret admiring what they carry and you come out and pretend you did not listen and criticize them that's why the teachings don't work because honor must be genuine it must be sincere there are politicians in this city who god has helped they have helped to build the plateau to what it is today we criticize them left right and center tear them down yet in our heart of hearts we desire a bit of those graces can you endure the smell so that you will receive the grace prayer point number two lord i receive forbearance and endurance forbearance and endurance i know that there are men of god who are silly resp respectfully speaking i know some of them may be arrogant i know some of them may be, but do you have the grace to endure there are many business people who can be very sarcastic are you willing to endure lift your voice and pray Lord, I receive the grace to endure. I receive the grace to endure. It Tonight is a night of encounters. Tonight is a night of transformation by the word of God. Tonight is a night of supernatural visitations. Tonight is a night of miracles, signs and wonders. Tonight is a night of unity. And then tonight is a night of impartation. This is the part that I want us to be very sensitive about because it starts right away. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. The possibilities of the kingdom are transferable. Virtues are transferable. Graces are transferable. And you know the kind, the dimension, and the level of grace that is upon you by the results that you command so i like for our hearts to be open with all meekness and humility to receive that which the lord is doing the god of miracles i'm teaching tonight on the god of miracles psalm 72 and verse 18. our god is a supernatural god our god is a miracle working god it's a very important fact that I must stress our God is a supernatural God and our God is a miracle working God I'd like you to read with me if you can see it projected Psalm 72 and verse 18 ready please read blessed be the Lord God the God of Israel who only doeth wondrous things the Bible lets us know that the God of Israel is a miracle worker. The God of Israel is a miracle worker. Let me again announce that the days of miracles are not over. No, God is still in the business of doing miracles. The days of miracles did not end with the book of Acts. It did not end with the early church. It did not end with the dispensation of the generals. It did not even end with our modern day patriarchs. As far as the history 
of the church and of Christianity is concerned in this nation. By the grace of God, I'm a student of history. I have studied revivals across continents. I have studied the history of the church in Nigeria. I've had the honor and the privilege to meet a few people in their lifetime before they transited. I've had the honor to talk with a few revivalists. I know what I am saying. Miracles are not ended. God is still in the business of lifting people. God is still in the business of healing the sick. God is still in the business of raising the dead. God is still in the business of turning lives around. God is still in the business of wiping the tears of day that cry. God is still in the business of supernaturally lifting people and shifting their levels from one dimension to the other. God is a miracle worker and the days of miracles are only beginning truthfully speaking he is not changed for in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6 the A part it says for I am the Lord and I change not I am the Lord and I change not if I was a miracle worker before I am still a miracle worker Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 Apostle Paul was teaching and he had this to say about Jesus that Jesus Christ the same yesterday the same today and the same forever the same yesterday the healer yesterday the healer today the healer forever the lifter yesterday the lifter today and the lifter forever if you are with me say amen very quickly what are miracles we have to understand a bit about the supernatural this for me as far as i'm concerned is a crusade even though it was intended to be a conference and so um my teaching would be as basic as possible because we have to give room um for the ministry of the spirit praise the name of the lord miracles and the supernatural are the foundations of the christian faith you have to understand this everything about the faith life from genesis down to revelation is a communication of the supernatural and the communication of the miraculous from genesis the first verse to revelation the last verse it's it's everything supernatural and everything miraculous are we together now let me say something very important God is not a magician God does not do magic magic is a demonic and satanic manipulation of spiritual laws an attempt to aberrate and copy that which is divine God does not do magic God does not work magic but he is a miracle worker he's not a magician there are herbalists who practice magic there are people all across the world who are experts as far as the manipulation of spiritual laws are concerned and they seem to have provided a measure and a level of solutions and so over the years through their track record they have been trusted and sometimes we can bring these people side by side and just conclude that the most important thing is that there is a universal force that empowers them all god is not a magician but he is a miracle worker it's always been god's desire all through scripture to display the supernatural on earth and then in the midst of his people every once in a while we see through scripture that there will be a spectacular demonstration of the divine hand of God over the lives and the affairs of men within territories. It will cause men to call upon the name of the Lord again. It will cause men to recognize his all surpassing power above the ten kings, above the spiritual forces that attempt to sabotage God's purposes. So God has always intended that his people never forget him as a miracle worker what are miracles 
let's do a quick definition miracles are supernatural occurrences miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature or the usual course of events miracles defy the laws of nature and they also defy the usual course of events praise the name of the Lord the Bible from the Old Testament down to the life and the ministry of Jesus and then to the ministry of the apostles was full of all kinds of miracles right from creation in Genesis 1 let me run through a few you don't have to write just listen down to Enoch's translation the Bible talks of the miracle of the flood even though historically there are still all kinds of arguments as to whether the flood in the days of Noah really happened but based on the authority of scripture we know that there was such an event it was not a parable there was such an event on earth where the entire earth was flooded with water the miracle of the donkey speaking in numbers 22 the burning bush for instance Moses in the house of Pharaoh advocating the exodus of the nation of Israel and all the plagues that followed until Pharaoh gave in these are manifestations of the hand and the power of God we read about the pillar of cloud and fire by day and by night we read about manna sent from heaven the Bible records we read about water from the rock in Rephidim you find that in Exodus 17 we read about the mysterious and the strange defeat of the enemies of Israel all through scripture these are examples of miracles the supernatural division of Jordan River Jordan the Bible talks about men who were unusually empowered like Samson who taught beasts with their bare hands defeated the Philistines with the jawbone of an ass removed gates over cities we read about a man called Elijah the Tishbite who single-handedly shut the heavens and that for a period of three and a half years there was no rain in that land supernatural manifestations of the hand of God the Bible talks to us about the widow's son who was raised from the dead fire coming from heaven to consume men the healing of the waters in Jericho the Bible talks to us about several other miracles the miraculous restoration of Naaman the Bible talks about the axe head that had to float against gravity I'm showing you instances from scripture a display of miracles signs and wonders the preservation of Jonah in the belly of the fish how could a man be in the belly of the fish for three days defy all the laws of biology and then come out with a message from the belly of the fish God is a miracle worker then we read of the miracles in the ministry of Jesus John chapter 2 starts by telling us the miracle of the wine in the wedding in Cana Jesus Christ himself healing the demoniac in the synagogue healing Peter's mother-in-law the drought of fish and the miracle that followed the important man who was healed in Jerusalem John 5 the servant of the centurion the widow of Nain Jairus daughter these are all supernatural manifestations of the power of God the feeding of the 5,000 with two loaves and five fish one of the synoptics record the feeding of the 4,000 also the transfiguration of Jesus Christ money coming out from the mouth of a fish 
that means god can go to any length to see to it that they that call upon his name do not suffer shame may that be a word for someone tonight in the name of jesus the christ of god all kinds of miracles time will fail me to begin to do a comprehensive rundown of these manifestations the great of the greatest of them that we know is the miracle of resurrection where the son of the living god gave himself up and he was locked the bible says and there were servants all around but at the third day the bible says an angel came rolled the stone sat on it it's not a parable it actually happened and the son of the living god raised up by the spirit of holiness he rose from the grave without blood in his body all the blood had been drained and yet he was still alive what manner of man is jesus we sing god is a god of miracles he appeared to the disciples admonished them over a period of 40 days and then levitated right before them into the heavens they waited 10 more days in fear then a supernatural event happened again god is a god of miracles the bible says in acts chapter 2 when you start from verse 1 it says now when the day of pentecost was fully come that they were gathered together in one accord then it says suddenly a miracle happened there was a sound like it was in ezekiel 37 and it came and filled the room and they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire these events actually happened on the earth rested upon each and every one of them they were filled with the holy spirit and that was the beginning of the manifestation of the church supernatural in one day three thousand people came to jesus christ then you read through the book of acts the spectacular display of the mighty hand of god how could you say the days of miracles are over the bible talks about serpents that could not harm the apostles the bible talked of people who died and brought themselves back to life god is a god of miracles i had the honor and the privilege to have witnessed firsthand the miracle and the ministry of our dearly beloved evangelist Reinhard Bonke. I was right there on that crusade ground. I remember like yesterday. I attended that crusade the first day. I saw spectacular miracles. And by the second day I made up my mind that I wanted to sow that seed of honor to that man before he would transit in glory. I wheeled people from the wheelchair myself they had stopped me because they said i was not part of the committee i said you're joking you don't know how far i travel to be part of this crusade committee or no committee i must sow that seed of honor and while i was wheeling people from the wheelchair i said lord this is how it will also happen one day in my meeting i am honoring someone you have lifted right before my eyes i saw people stand from wheelchairs right before my eyes like we saw yesterday i saw people lifting crutches and walking and i said what in the world is this god is a miracle worker hebrews chapter 11 is an archive of men and women who walk the earth like gods placing their faith on god almighty and did valiantly on earth here's how the bible puts it that time will fail me to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions women who received their dead back to life please shout with me god is a miracle worker one more time just god is a miracle worker acts chapter 2 1 verse 22 this was paul giving his sermon on the day of pentecost and here's what he said ye men of israel hear these words 
Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you not by stories not by parables God approved Jesus he validated that Jesus was actually sent through the spectacular manifestation of miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him not in the absence of you in the midst of you just like it will happen shortly in this place that right in the midst of you the spirit of the living God will be having a holy convocation through this crowd setting the captives free healing the sick and bringing liberty to as many in the name of Jesus Christ God is a miracle worker in John chapter 2 chapter 20 and verse 21 Jesus is preparing finalizing his days on earth so he would transit back in glory as the victorious Savior and King and here's what he had to say Jesus said to them again peace be unto you as my father had sent me Joshua Selman even so I send you as my father has sent me please every man of God hear me there is a way God sent Jesus he sent him with an anointing not just a message he sent Jesus with a great provable unction he didn't just send him with a well-meaning comforting message he said as my father had sent me in that similitude I send you as my father had sent me so send I you John chapter 14 John chapter 14 and verse 12 in fact please back up a bit let's go to Matthew Matthew chapter 10 we'll read verse 1 then we'll read verse 7 Matthew chapter 10 this is Jesus test running the disciples who would later become the apostles of the Lamb this was the instruction he gave them verse 1 then we go to 7 and when he had called unto him the 12 disciples listen carefully he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease verse 7 please and he said as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand prove the reality of this message by verse 8 healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead casting out devils these are the proofs that the kingdom has come that if these realities are not true then we have a right to doubt the reality of the kingdom in our midst if it is true that Jesus is alive if it is true that he conquered death hell and the grave there must be tokens of that victory and the signs and the wonders that have been experienced in the church and that will be experienced tonight are tokens of that victory it is true that Jesus is alive and it is true that God still works miracles the requests that are scattered here in the bowls and on the social media platforms are representations of the pain the ills the concerns of so many across the plateau how would God be such a benevolent father and look down from heaven and watch these sheets representing the, the pain of families and then allow us gather like this only to share the grace and return back in misery if you were God you would not respond to such hunger that way I assure you tonight that these Egyptians you see you will see them no more forever one more time I prophesy that these Egyptians you see over your ministry over your life in the name of Jesus you will see them no more forever please sit down in John 14 and verse 12 Jesus said verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do this is scripture the works that I do shall he also do and greater works than these shall he do because I go 
unto my father mark 16 from verse 17 mark 16 from verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe if you are a believer please shout i am a believer it said these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils in my name leave that scripture there they shall cast out devils in my name they shall cast out devils whilst i'm speaking right now the power of god is touching people i want you to bring them out there are all kinds of demonic cases right now being addressed by the spirit of god because he said in my name i declare that any spirit that is not on the, of the christ located within this vicinity in the name of jesus the christ of god i come against you now in the name of jesus help them i come against you now in the name of jesus i come against you now in the name of jesus i come against you now don't bring people out at random those under the anointing the power of god is touching people the power of god is touching people just bring those under the anointing in my name they shall cast out devils in my name they shall cast out devils i'm not sure that what's that he's sick what's wrong with him okay i'm going to pray for the sick i'm talking about those who are under the anointing right now as i'm speaking i'm seeing what looks like fire i'm explaining this scripture for you i'm seeing what looks like fire and is resting on people from the front to the back i'm seeing chains even breaking right now as i speak and i declare in the name of jesus my god please help them in the name of jesus the son of the living god those chains be broken right now please ushers help them i'm only talking about those under the anointing my dear look at me even though i've not started praying for the sick but since you are out let me pray for you ushers can you help coordinate the people so that we make sure that only the people that just bring those under the anointing that's the instruction please someone just help coordinate them the lord is setting people free right now my dear do you believe in jesus shout jesus as loud as you can you that's not how to shout out of her now in the name of jesus christ and the little one is her daughter baby in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit every demon and every devil that oppresses you gives way now in the name of jesus christ in my name please keep that scripture this is not a parable in my name they shall cast out devils we're going to shout that name once whilst we're seated and as i see four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against judah and jerusalem so that no man doth lift up his head he said but i have sent four carpenters again i decree and declare that every influence around this vicinity that is not the christ it comes under judgment right now in the name of jesus it comes under judgment right now in the name of jesus it comes under judgment right now in the name of jesus please give us that scripture in my name they shall cast out devils in my name they shall speak with new tongues verse 18 in my name they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them in my name they shall lay hands on the sick they shall lay hands on the sick they shall lay hands on the blind they shall lay hands on cripples they shall lay hands on the deaf they shall lay hands on those with terminal diseases and the bible says they shall recover someone shout god is a miracle worker one more time shout god is a miracle worker
Now listen please. We are about to pray shortly. I want to explain something very briefly. The dynamics of the supernatural. In as much as God is a miracle worker, you must understand the spiritual operation of the miraculous. But please allow me to pray for those in front so that they go and sit. In the name of Jesus, everyone here in front under any influence that is not of the Christ, I come with the rod of a higher priesthood and I command those forces, go now, 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 out of their lives, out of their destinies, out of their families. In the name of Jesus, everything stolen be recovered now. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the Bible declares, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We enforce liberty. Blotting out every handwriting, the Bible says, and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed it to his cross. Every legal access upon which the devil lays claim on your life and family, I declare you are free right now in the name of Jesus. You are free right now in the name of Jesus. You are free right now in the name of Jesus. Father, these ones who have come out in the name that is above all names, for them and for their families, they will never return to this again. We build a spiritual fortification around your life. You will never forget this crusade. In the name of Jesus. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now for those who are fine, they can return back to their seat. Let me touch on this very quickly. Hallelujah. There is... Now, I don't know how we're going to do this now, my God. There is someone at the back. You came with a crutch. Lift that crutch up and walk. Now. Please. Lift your crutch and walk now. In the name of Jesus. Look at it. Lift your crutch. Walk. 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 Lift your crutch and walk. Look at this. A miracle has happened there. My God. Just is this how you celebrate the miracle walking God? Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me another person. You came, I don't know, there is, if it's a crutch or something that is assisting you, like an aid. Right now the power of God is touching you. I'm going to pray for the sick, but this is just an instruction God is giving me. Whoever that person is, don't be afraid. Lift it up and walk. Lift it up and walk. Lift it up and walk. Don't be afraid. Lift it up and walk. I don't know if there's someone like that. Lift it up and walk. We'll be seated shortly. The devil is a liar. Lift it up and walk. My dear, look at me. How long have you been with this? This is seven months. There's a miracle happening somewhere. Celebrate Jesus. Please guide them, those who, if there's someone like that and God is doing a miracle, let's. Someone, a wheelchair. There's a miracle there. 
Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise, Joss. Is this how you celebrate miracles? We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let me have a mic, please. I want to talk to this lady. Another miracle is happening somewhere. Please hold on. Be careful with them so that they don't enjoy it. Look at the lady. My dear, look at me. Hold on. Who brought this lady? How long has it been? For the past eight years. For the past eight years. Hold on, please. Is this mic working? Please help us. She was diagnosed of kidney failure September last Kidney year. failure? Yes, sir. September last year. My out. sister, look at me. In the name of Jesus, walk. Come. 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 Careful with her so she doesn't fall. I command that devil out of her now. In the name of Jesus. Are you celebrating miracles? Please just help her. Let her get somewhere and sit down. Let me talk with this lady. What's your name, my dear? Please, someone manage them just as we celebrate miracles. Just give them somewhere to sit so they are not stressed. Yes, please. Someone, a crutch, someone has been healed right now. We are here for you. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. Everything that must change, let it change in my life right now. God is already touching people. Are you praying? Someone is praying. Hallelujah. hallelujah look at me mama be careful don't stretch yourself how long has this been who is with the mic okay eight years, how many years eight years eight years, eight years. you live in just here yes, sir. what's your name ma my name is stella stella Nash. from Stel from where ma what area to do water you believe in miracles mm. place your hand there father in the name of jesus perfect this woman right now the power of the holy ghost is touching you now now in the name of jesus help her the power of god is coming upon her just keep her down there in the name of jesus let it be over forever let me talk with this girl what's your name my dear my name is gloria from where from Bukuru. how long has this been since august last year august last year yes sir you had to use the crutch Yes, sir. How were you walking before? Let me see. Use the crutch. Let me just see how you were walking with the crutch. This is how you used to walk. When you came here, was this how you were walking? Now lift it and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, the Lord perfects you right now. In the name of Jesus, we'll be praying for the sick shortly. This was just an instruction that God gave me. Please let them find somewhere to sit. But before we sit, there is someone you came here. Is this my left or right? This is left. Your left ear, you could not hear with it. You couldn't hear with it. Check yourself now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, check it right now. You check it, you find out that a miracle just happened. A miracle just happened. A miracle just happened. I rebuke deafness of all sorts. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. Deafness of all sorts. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. Let there be a supernatural miracle for you. 
in jesus name can we finish up what we are teaching before we pray please sit please sit please sit god is doing mighty things in this place praise the lord now let me explain something very quickly and then we will pray for a very long time believers have found the subject of the miraculous mysterious i want to explain something please and respectfully speaking if you're a minister of the gospel here you may want to listen because i found it strange for many years why even though we read from scripture that miracles should be a common occurrence of believers more so servants of god but the reason why we do not see these experiences um and then i got to a point where what's that what's happening what is that please please ushers make sure you verify whatever it is what, what's that what happened oh the ears have opened my god my friend look at me stand up stand up stand up what's your name huh israel israel yes what's your name sir how long have you had this since you were born is this how you celebrate miracle in jaws amazing oh this lady her ears open too look at this look at this stand up my friend where is the gentleman stand up from the day you were born close the ear come oh dear just put the mic close to him just turn don't look at me just say what you think i'm saying hallelujah give jesus praise my friend look at me you believe in miracles now because um you love jesus i'll pray for you it's not enough to receive miracles you must be empowered to go and represent the same my friend look at me how long what's your name my name is israel israel how long have you had this 2006 how many years is that? More than, more than 15. 15 years. Which of the ear? The left. The left. Put your hand there. My dear, what's your name? Favor. Favor. How long has this been? Yes. Last year. What happened? Yes. Just like that. Yes. This is how you know that this is the devil. Why will you have God give you ears and for no reason it just stops? Was this verified medically? You went to the hospital. Yes. Which hospital? Jordan Air Force. Air Force. Where is it? Oh, okay, there's a hospital like that. I'm so sorry. The reason why we do this is because I guess because of some of these things that happen around any spectacular manifestation, people think it's stage managed. So sometimes it's forced us to have to go out of our way. Not everybody is fake. Oh. There are people who have paid their price in God genuinely and they carry genuine grace i think i i need to say this praise the name of the lord father in the name of jesus perfection this miracle you have done in their lives it remains so my god will so celebrate miracles this night in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the spirit of grace it will never return to you again in jesus name celebrate them as they return back to their seat praise the lord now please listen i'm about to share something very important we've had an age-old controversy especially in the body of christ and there's been as far as manifesting the supernatural is concerned and i just want to place a balance to this we've had people who believe in the ministry of the holy spirit and they may not place that much value on the word of god for instance 
we can just be singing here and then miracles begin to happen and so there are people who have obtained results that way and they downplay the necessity of the word and of scripture they believe that the singular factor responsible for the miraculous is the holy spirit and then there are others who believe that it is just the word of god if the word of god is not here that you cannot receive so there's been a controversy between those who are in quote the spirit people and those who are the word people this has been so for ages both of them are right but both of them are incomplete the ministry of the word and the spirit is not a choice for you to choose one they go together and i want to explain to you the roles that they play as far as the manifestation of spiritual reality is concerned the bible never said in the beginning was the spirit it says in the beginning was the word so we understand that in order of precedence it is the word of god listen to me the word of god defines the jurisdiction and the boundary of his commitment in the life of a believer god cannot be committed to a believer outside of the jurisdiction of scripture you have to understand this the word of god defines the coordinates of god's commitment every time your demand or your action is out of the provisions allowed from scripture god loves you but you cannot secure his attention nor his commitment you have to understand this the assignment of the spirit through the anointing is to give credence and performance to the word please understand this the holy spirit shows up through his anointing to honor the word that is spoken that means if the word for healing goes forth listen carefully that jesus said in my name the sick will be healed because that word has been proclaimed and the word has been honored the assignment of the holy spirit is to ensure that the healing anointing is sufficiently experienced to make sure the anointing has the assignment of validating the word the assignment of the anointing is to ensure that god does not look like a liar so the anointing has no assignment when the word has not been proclaimed because the assignment of the anointing the anointing gives credence to the word are we together now yes so if i say blind eyes we open that is a word that came from the lord it is the anointing that goes forth from the spirit and brings performance to that word so when we celebrate open eyes then it is proven now experientially that god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent so the idea of emphasizing the spirit as against the word or the word as against the spirit is unnecessary it's like foil and a car the assignment of the foil is to make sure that the car moves to its designated place but fuel in a jerry can in itself is not useful the value of that fuel is when it functions in a car are you getting what i'm saying now the word of god is like that car and the anointing is like the fuel if you have the car alone even if it is a a latest whatever it is of a car if it does not have the fuel it will be there but not be able to do much so if all you have is word 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 with no spirit you will keep speaking a lot of theological dissertations with no grace for performance and if all you have is spirit 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 you will not know when you have delved into occultism because the word of god that creates the boundary is not there the realm of the spirit is a vast realm and the holy spirit is not the only spirit there so the word of god gives you balance i don't know if god has helped somebody this night yes. so when we celebrate the manifested presence of god when we celebrate his anointing it is because the factor that confirms the word is there now we can speak boldly knowing that the grace that makes for performance is there All of the people who God healed here, 
they came sick and even though i was preaching and what i was saying was the word of god they still were not healed until the word for their healing so the holy ghost will keep hovering his assignment is to confirm the word spoken not the word available the word spoken the word declared not the word available the word spoken and god said light be and there was and god said light be and there was are we blessed now yes now believers listen please we have a participatory role to play as far as the manifestation of the supernatural and the miraculous is concerned i must quickly say this there's been a narrative for a very long time that believers do not have any role to play if god wants to heal me he will heal me we say that's a very well-intentioned statement but it is not accurate are we together now yes oftentimes we'll see in scripture jesus telling sick people what do you desire that i do for you even when he met obvious situations you would think when he met blind Bartimaeus on his way going out of jericho and he called upon him thou son of david have mercy upon me you would think it would be obvious that he needed healing from his blind eyes if you understand the way god walks you will know the kind of respect he has for the will of man god will not assume that you need healing he respects your will that much even at the detriment of your eternal destiny he still allows you to make a choice there are people going to hell today even though the victory of christ over sin over death over satan is a reality are we together the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so you must verbalize your commitment in fact here's how it puts it it says be anxious for nothing but it says in everything by prayer and supplication even through with thanksgiving make your request known don't assume god knows it make your request known and so this request that we have is an honor to that scripture make your request known let the lord know you need healing let him know that you need to step into new levels let him know you are tired of your current level don't say god you are watching me and doing nothing you have to make your request known hear me the name given to your participatory role as far as the manifestation of the miraculous is concerned is called faith faith i did explain i think in one of the sessions was it the first or the morning service yesterday how that faith is more than believing for a very long time we call believing faith believing is part of the equation believing has to do with conviction you're agreeing with god but that is not enough to the faith equation faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his word the name given to the action not just the declaration not just the believing believing comes from the word pistis and it's not enough it has to be action i demonstrated it here yesterday many people continue to believe as we call it and we believe in definitely without a manifestation there has to be an action of obedience deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass the bible declares if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day then you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you joshua 1 verse 8 it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do not just to say not just to wish to do according to all that is written therein then and only then shall thou make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success are we together so faith very important theologically speaking there are three places in scripture where you would hear the statement your faith has made you whole the first is in matthew chapter 9 from verse 20 to 22 this was the narrative of the woman with the issue of blood the bible lets us know that this woman said to herself watch her act of faith now she had spent money the bible says on physicians doctors and she could not become better hearing and seeing jesus pass she said to herself 
if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. If she just stopped at saying, she would remain in that issue forever. She had to take that step. It was a risk. And when she touched Jesus, the Bible says that she touched the hem of his garment. Verse 21, please. It says, for she said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. 22. It says, Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith, what faith? The summation of everything you did as touching your confidence in me. Your contemplation, your speaking, backed up by your action called faith. This is what made you whole. Not your speaking alone. Not your wishing to be healed alone. From your wishing, your desire. Because the Bible says, what things soever ye desire. So it starts with desire. When you pray, it says, believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it. Your desire, the confession, the action of faith that you take. All together, the Bible calls it faith. It says that's what played to bring your healing. Are we together? Second story that proves that faith is important as far as the manifestation of the God of miracles is in Luke chapter 17. It's a long reading, but we may not read it for time's sake. From verse 11 to 9, the story of the 10 lepers. The Bible says that Jesus was passing and there were 10 lepers. Desiring to be healed, he told them, get up. Prove that you believe me by taking that risk. Go and show yourself to the priest. The Bible says, whilst they went, not whilst they spoke, not whilst they thought, they had to stand up and take actions of obedience. And whilst they went, they discovered that they were cleansed and the bible says one returned and gave thanks etc but the, the message is that they had to get up and move they had to get up and take action last scripture math mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52 long reading again just write it for reference the bible talks about a blind man who was healed he saw blind Bartimeo, the son of Timio. He sat by the highway begging. You're tempting me to read and finish that scripture. Well, let's read. We've started. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, so he started with his hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. The Bible says he began to cry out and say. So we see that it moved from hearing to his saying, verbalizing his intent. Thou son of David, have mercy on me 48 we're reading to 52 and many charged him that he should hold his peace that means distractions are not unusual when you are manifesting faith there were people who tried to shut him down but he cried the more thou son of david have mercy on me next verse please and jesus stood still and commanded him to be called and when they called the blind man when they called the blind man the bible recognizes his blindness Jesus said unto him, Be of good cheer, rise, he called you. Okay, the, he was asked, and then he casted away his garment and what? Rose. He would have sat there and said, I don't need to stand. All I need is healing in my eyes. He would have remained there. He had to take that step, even though blind, at the instance of the word, he took that step. And the Bible calls it faith. 51. Jesus answered and said unto him, Seems like a silly question. But this is the extent to which God has regard for the will of man. What will thou that I should do unto thee? And the man politely answered, the blind man, that I may receive my sight. Tonight, don't just say, God, help me. It looks like a good prayer, but the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. You have to mention what you desire. Don't just say, Lord, just help me my life. I don't even understand what is happening. Whatever you can do is a very well-meaning, well-intentioned communication, but there is no faith there. Give us this day, and you mention what you want, our daily bread. Are we together? And Jesus said to him, Go thy way, thy faith. Aha. Uh -huh. Here you find it again. Thy faith had made thee whole and immediately he received his sight and followed jesus in the way let me wrap up this brief teaching session by sharing what i think is most important seldom forgotten 
when we are dealing with the subject of miracle signs and wonders what is the purpose of miracles why does god reveal himself as a miracle working god god is a god of purpose he does nothing just for the fun of it we have to learn to discern miracles if we do not discern the purpose and the intent of miracles then it is usually very difficult for christ to be glorified in the midst of miracles number one there are two biblical reasons why miracles happen number one to reveal the love of the father the first assignment of the miraculous is to demonstrate practically that God's communication about his love for his people is not a lie is not a scam John 3 16 the character of love is that it always gives for God so loved the world that he gave not just desired he gave if it is true that God is a loving God it must be demonstrated in the extent of his benevolence our confidence as we receive is that the fatherhood of God is still in place in our lives you must be ever conscious of the fatherhood of God he said which of you being evil which of you will your son ask for bread and you give him a stone ask for meat fish and you give him a serpent he said if you being evil even though you are evil you have that sense of empathy how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts other versions say the holy ghost god is a giver please say after me god is a giver the reason why we are receivers is because he is a giver the revelation of the love of god first john chapter 4 from verse 8 apostle john was teaching and admonishing us first john 4 and verse 8 the bible says that he that does not love does not know god for god is love god does not have love god is love so when he demonstrates miracles signs and wonders there is a message behind the blind eye opening there is a message behind the cripple walking listen carefully there is a message behind the demonic being delivered there is a message behind one who is poor sitting on the ground being lifted overnight to the place of princes every supernatural manifestation of god has a message the miracle is for you but the message is what helps you to see the intent of god in it most times we celebrate the miracles we even celebrate the man who god used the vessel but we do not discern the message behind miracles so from tonight when you experience miracles don't just celebrate and dance and say god is good he's done me well discern the message behind every miracle that has happened that will happen this night and the days that follow there is a message do not enjoy the miracle alone make sure you are discerning enough to see the message that is back of it someone shout amen hallelujah number two why does god reveal himself as the god of miracles what is the purpose of the supernatural and the miraculous to show and reveal his might and his power to show and to reveal his might and his power drawing men to salvation and causing men to honor him you have to understand this god works miracles he reveals himself as a god of miracles to show to reveal his might and his power drawing men to salvation and causing men to honor him there's a long reading when you read daniel chapter 3 for reference from verse 1 to 30 is a long reading you read about the events that happened in babylon when a 90 feet stature of gold a man who decided that he had been so exalted he will be god and he built a stature that at the sound of musical instruments the timbrel etc that everyone would bow and the bible says there were three hebrew boys shadrach meshach and abednego who although they had 
the fortitude to honor the king they made up their mind that on that matter on the matter of idolatry they would not bow the consequence is that the fire was made seven times hotter and they were thrown into the fire but a miracle happened there that as soon as they got into that fire the chains and everything melted away like wax before the fire and they saw one in their midst who was like the son of god in the end of it let's look at daniel chapter 3 i hope i'm right verse um at least let's look at 27 maybe the last three verses daniel chapter 3 the bible says and the princes look up governors and captains the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power ah, powerful statement the fire so there are some bodies on earth that fire has no power over there are bodies there are families a body does not just mean a human body a ministry can be a body a business can be a body there are bodies that orchestrations of darkness has no authority reminds me what jesus said nothing shall by any means hurt you nor was the hair of their hair singed neither was their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them a decree was passed as a result nebuchadnezzar spake and said as a result the purpose of miracles blessed be the god of shadrach meshach and abednego i do not know his name but i will name him after those who know him when god works a miracle in your life that testimony can give god a name through your life why do you think he's called the god of abraham then the god of isaac your assignment is to spend your lifetime giving god a new name by the spectacular manifestation of the wonders that he walks through your life that you should not depart from earth and all they know is that he's the god of abraham isaac and jacob something about your experience with god should give him a name please keep that scripture we're wrapping up the bible says who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god very interesting two more verses 29 therefore someone because of what god is doing in your life what had been the prior decrees about to be changed tonight in the name of jesus therefore i make a decree that every people every nation every language which speak anything amiss against the god of this gentleman shall be cut in pieces and their houses be made a dunghill because hallelujah there is no other god that can deliver after this sort there is a way god does miracles he does it the way julius berger built roads or most of the construction companies how many of you have seen a standard construction company building a road or doing some kind of architectural work they do it in a way that you know is them they leave a little signature if julius berger builds you a place you will see a little symbol b so that you do not confuse don't give the credit to the wrong people so there is a way other gods heal there is a way other gods change lives but there is a way my god and your god does it he does it in a way that everybody knows that this one it was El Shaddai that lifted you. It was El Shaddai that gave you a new song. My Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. As a result of this, the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. We discern miracles when we see the love of jesus revealed through them we discern miracles when we see the might of god revealed through them i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and its riders have been thrown into the sea that was a song of miriam when they saw the matchless hand of god 
listen to me I am a recipient of miracles myself right in this city I was diagnosed of situations that only God would do a miracle for me I remember it today like it happened yesterday a mysterious infection that I could not explain wanted to eat up my head completely every kind of medical consultation failed right in this city medical experts I remember the pain of taking samples of the injuries I remember being in the lab and having several lab attendants do their best I remember they came up with a lotion they came up with soap to help me and it would it was just, it was like this thing would not it was a miracle that hair would still grow on my head God is a God of miracles listen it's one thing to preach what you read in the Bible it's another thing to preach what has happened in your life sometimes God allows us to go through certain things so we can have sufficient compassion to administer that dimension of grace some of us are too innocent we are too separated from what we are helping people from that's why the compassion to insist until they are healed until they are delivered I remember that night I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and there was a miracle supernatural miracles I'm not exaggerating more than 70% of the wounds had disappeared what is this I had read watch videos but this is happening to me not some person in the US I have been a benefactor of the miraculous I remember a time in my life I couldn't look at this light you see if I looked at it for over five minutes my eyes would burn burn literally I remember talking with a consultant who had done everything written the focal length of the you know glasses that would be made and all of that and I said Lord I don't have a problem with this but I'm a young man and I have I didn't even know that I had the call of God upon my life but I just knew there was something burning in me please listen carefully I remember watching Benny Hinn he was ministering and I got down on my knees with childlike faith I said Lord I don't know this man but I believe him and suddenly he said there's a young man you're watching from Africa and there's a problem with your eyes light not vision physically from the television came and entered my eyes till today I have 2020 vision I know what it means to be a benefactor and a recipient of miracles we're about to pray but I cannot end without telling you my story I began my pursuit for God loving him but I had a dissatisfaction in my heart I listened to sermons I went to churches I saw well-meaning people loving the Lord but I saw the sick remaining sick I saw oppressed people remaining oppressed we sang hymns we sang songs that communicated the power of God and I read those hymns powerful hymns that talked about the mighty hand of God hymns like up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph on his hands he arose the victor I, I, I read those hymns and I said no 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 something is wrong I had powerful messages and in the midst of those messages I saw people who I knew were oppressed I said there has to be something more than this 
We're tired of the status quo There's gotta be more than this It's gotta be It's gotta be more It's gotta be more It's gotta be more than this For desperate people do desperate things And we are pressing in It's gotta be more It's gotta be more it's gotta be more than this. Listen, when the Lord called me to ministry, I said, Lord, please, I cannot stand before your people and keep advocating truths that I cannot defend. I do not want to tell people things that I will go back to the room and say, Did I lie? I didn't want to advocate dimensions that could not be defended. My hunger, first for God and for His genuine fire, reached the heavens. Days became weeks. Weeks became months. Months became years. There is a way you desire God that you know if you do not find Him, you will die. I'm not talking of looking for God for a sermon. I'm not talking for, about looking for Him for money and cars and houses. There is a law that governs encounters. When you seek him with all your heart, you will truly find him. Please listen to my story. One night, I was lying down quietly, minding my business, and a spectacular miracle happened. All of a sudden, from a direction I could not explain, here he walked into my room, his majesty, my desire of years. The one who preachers spoke about Jesus was standing right before me the one who died that Nazarene I could look at any part of his body forever and not be tired brilliance I'm telling you I still do not know how his face looks like I was like a speck of dust on the floor I didn't know how do I start worshiping this man do I bow down do I kneel down do I sing him a song what do I offer such an august visitor please listen to me because some of you are in a phase where you are about to have such encounters he never spoke a word to me all he did was to stretch his right hand towards me and light imagine carrying the sun help those under the anointing please light from him is like taking the sun and putting it inside an ant how i did not die is something i will ask him when we get to heaven i have seen the one we talk about let me tell you this the first time i saw jesus I knew that many people do not know him no 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 you know today people say they saw Jesus it's not for me to argue with anyone but if it's the Jesus I saw that you saw you will never be the same no matter whether you believe it or not read your Bible and see what happened to people when they met him it took me more than one year to recover from that encounter he stretched his hands and light came now watch this he didn't have to open his mouth yet he was talking to me that was the first time i discovered that the language of god is not hebrew the language of god is not greek the language of god is not Hausa. it's not english the language of god is light the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple listen to me after that encounter I opened my Bible and I could not believe again it was like a straight line was drawn from Genesis to Revelation I started knowing things I did not remember studying them where is this revelation coming from in another encounter listen to me 
I was standing and I saw a crowd of people like this. It was a whole generation of people and they were crying and saying there is no food and there is no water. I said, who is the cause? And they pointed to me. I said, no, 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 I can't do this. Why will I deprive you of food and water? But I was afraid because in that vision, it's like there were people who were following me to persecute me. And I was afraid. But I made up my mind. I said, if I perish, I perish. As soon as I opened the door, I saw a giant gray-headed man that I now know to be a similitude of the Holy Spirit. He said, give me your hands. I will walk with you. And he held me. And that began the ministry of the Spirit that you now see today. Sometimes it's important that we explain this. It's, please don't misunderstand me this is not a show of pride at all i was praying one night and i was caught up to the realm of the spirit please help them and then the lord spoke to me and said son from this day i give you my manifest presence as a gift I didn't even understand what you were saying what is the meaning of this all of a sudden i see this angel stand before me and he said this angel will walk with you across every nation and every place and he said his name is the angel of the lord's presence i said is that not supposed to be god himself and this is why many times you see some of the manifestations that you see but here's why i said all these stories the Lord gave me an assignment and he said every city every nation and every continent that I will send you to now be sensitive please that in that congregation there will always be a group of people that the lights that came from me to you you must transfer part of that light to them I have not failed in this assignment once this is why you heard me pleading with you and said please help them you see what is happening my god please bring them out help them so tonight people of god i am not just coming to do a man of god's thing no i am sent there is a mandate and there is an assignment and it's an honor to bring this light that came from heaven to the plateau the light that will ignite men the light that will call men into supernatural dimensions of ministry aside from the healings and the miracles hear me that light that came from his majesty hear me there are people in this place this night there will be wells of the prophetic that will be opened afresh again some of you have seen this day in your dreams some of you have seen it in visions for some of you it's not new you know what i'm saying god already showed you that one day you will be standing face to face with destiny please wherever you are lift your voice in one minute cry from the depth of your heart let this be my night of visitation lift your voice and pray just you will never be the same the church on the plateau you will never be the same i bring you grace from the throne i bring you fire from his majesty Are you praying forget about what is happening focus on jesus pastors pray pray for your ministry prayer warriors pray women in ministry pray be 
business people pray politicians pray there is a visitation upon the plateau hallelujah now please listen to me please listen to me we're about to pray as i came in i came in a bit late and as i sat here i saw standing just at that screen there was a large angel standing there right here standing there and i saw them holding vials of oil and i knew immediately i knew the significance of what i was seeing and i'm praying because the spirit of god and the angelic there are impartations the front is filled you don't have to bring people out again please just help them wherever you are in one minute wherever you are i like you to pray every grace that you know that is available that you need for your life for business for ministry please lift your voice and pray call it by faith call it by faith Call it by faith. Your ministry is about to step into a new level. I assure you, it won't be ministry as usual. The God of miracles your business your spiritual life there are many of you God is calling you a new order of prayer and intercession a new order of fasting new dimensions of revelation new levels of the prophetic Don't be tired of praying. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please let me have your attention. May I request respectfully speaking. Reverend Akila. If we can have. Seven. Of the pastors and the leaders. Just seven as you would select. I want them to come and stand with me prophetically here. We are going to pray over the church on the plateau in unity. And we are going to say, Lord, let this be a new season. We are standing prophetically. Okay, please. Seven, at least let there be one woman, if it's possible, please, who represents the gates. We are going to pray. Something must happen in this land. Kali salako branda gato siata. All of you don't keep watching, just keep praying. We are praying for Plato. Forget about the sick. Forget about all of this. We are praying. It's a new season. We are going to stand in unity regardless of doctrinal differences regardless of the challenges we have here and there there are too small a reason hear me plateau there is much that god wants to do divided we truly fall it is in unity that we stand the days of celebrity christianity is over we must stand as one people in the name of jesus and lift up that banner of the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord now watch this hold on please this is what we are going to do everyone inside the overflow those following from whatever nation we are going to pray for a global audience but for now the attention is on the plateau god's own state 
a state he has so exalted yet to come into its prophetic destiny but we are standing as servants of God to say no longer will it remain a prophetic word far there we have come to give it life that it starts from now some of you have seen it you prophesied it in your churches and your groups that a day will come when God will move this way we cannot prolong anymore it's time to fulfill prophecy some of our fathers prophesied it on the plateau and went to be with the Lord without seeing it let it happen in our lifetime Maranatha come hallelujah now this is what will happen I will just allow one or two of our fathers to just pray and make decrees on behalf of all of us and then we will stand in unity and speak over the church in plateau tearing down the walls of divide tearing down the walls of spiritual unseriousness and we're going to pray that the fire from heaven will fall upon the church in plateau that on the streets in businesses in government in parliament from the government house to every ministry every parastatal let there be an invasion of the life and the power of jesus we have to pray for the destiny of our children we cannot lose the children in plateau to drugs we cannot lose the children in plateau to violence and all kinds of occultism it's time to take back what god has given to us are you in agreement open your mouth and begin to pray jesus Oh, city of Jaws. Oh, plateau. The sons of the strangers devour you no more, desecrate you no more. Oh, city of Jaws. Oh, plateau. Take your place once again. Take your place once again let revival break forth from the city of joss to the nations of the world do it jehovah do it jehovah do it jehovah watch over your word and perform your word amen Plateau, the land of hills and valleys and standing waters. Your enemies will never sit on you anymore. Your enemies will never take your lands anymore. Your enemies will never laugh at you anymore. The destinies that have been trapped on the land of Plateau shall be set free. God Almighty is going to set us free. Plateau shall be free. The name of Plateau shall be heard all over the world. The children of Plateau will be performers of miracles and wonders because the God of Israel is with us. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Now, we're, we're conserving time, but it's an honor to stand with a few of the representatives, the ministers, fathers, veterans in the gospel now please listen very carefully i want to make this decree in the name of the lord i stand here only by the election of grace but i want us to believe as we make these declarations hallelujah father we declare standing in faith as the church upon the plateau let the days of fighting and division come to an end now let the days of ill speakings tearing down one another based on tribal sentiments let it come to an end now in the name of jesus we stand in faith and corporately as a church we repent of anything that is given satan legal access over the plateau we plead the blood of jesus on the plateau we plead the blood of jesus over every altar that is speaking against the destiny of plateau state 
let mercy triumph over judgment for the bible declares if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face turning from their wicked ways it says i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sins and heal their lands we declare blood to be healed in the name of jesus we decree and declare O earth hear you the word of the lord yield your increase to the inhabitants of this state all of the over 17 local governments i hope i'm right we declare let revival fire from this point spread all through in the name of jesus every local government may god raise men and women of fire we pray for all the churches we pray for all the prayer groups all the mission agencies all the platforms that lift up the name of jesus fresh impartation upon them was he praying we pray for the government and all the politicians here represented we pray for our traditional rulers in the name of jesus may they be advised by right people every council of ahitophel we conquer we come against it in the name of jesus father the spirit of untimely death that is eating people up on the plateau in the name of jesus we banish that spirit forever the spirit of poverty and hardship eating up the destinies of people regardless of their education regardless their exposure we declare that that spirit comes under judgment in the name of jesus father once again let mantles return to the plateau once again let apostles rise from the plateau once again let evangelists rise from the plateau once again let prophets rise from the plateau hear me whoever has vowed that over his dead body for plateau to rise i command the earth to open and swallow them i'm saying it by the apostolic and the prophetic any human agent in fraternity with darkness that has vowed that this state will not rise we release a sword of judgment let the earth open and swallow them father let the gospel of jesus christ not die on the plateau in the name of jesus as our fathers who have gone ahead of us some of them have died some of them have a few more years they are wrapping up their stay lord raise younger people let there be succession let there be transference of graces raise younger people younger evangelists people of integrity people of character people of fire in the name of jesus now listen the national anthem of nigeria says that the labor of our heroes past should not be in vain it's not just a political statement it is also a spiritual statement let it not be that the labor over the gospel in this land plateau has survived so much and africa as a continent has survived so much therefore we make decree lord remember the blood of those who have died for the gospel remember the blood of those who were killed serving you remember the blood of the matthias on this land because you are a covenant keeping god let their blood not be in vain in the name of jesus we command greater dimensions of development on the plateau we command jobs for our young people in the name of jesus i pray for the businessmen on the plateau may the grace of god rest upon you in the name of jesus there are three spirits that i'm trusting will, will crush out of the plateau 
number one is the spirit of drunkenness number two listen to me i'm saying this respectfully the spirit of irresponsibility among young people and number three the spirit of lateness is a cost to do things too late are we together 40 years 50 years still in your father's house 60 years still not established in the name of jesus let the spirit of drunkenness drugs and all kinds of ills and vices we banish it from the plateau in the name of jesus number two the spirit that makes young people to not be responsible in the name of jesus we command that spirit out of our territory and number three we pray some of our parents in their 20s were already doing exploits in ministry and in business there were people who were heads of state in this nation in their early 30s there is no the spirit of lateness a snail like achievement please men and women of god let's take this prayer request back to our altars and let us pray it it must leave the plateau again we declare the spirit of lateness in this city we banish you forever and in the name of jesus the same way we are standing here by faith we make a declaration anybody who will divide the church anybody who will bring enmity among the church we banish them from this city in the name of jesus please listen to me the days of church fighting church pastor fighting pastor we have agreed that there are many people who need to grow we have agreed that we are not at the same spiritual level but let me tell you be patient and allow people grow are we together now when you see something wrong with your fellow man of god pray for them support them you hear that armed robbers came to steal from a church don't rejoice and clap and say it didn't come to my church don't make the mistake of esther Mordecai gave her a warning and said don't you think if they finish with the Jews you will be spared she wanted to make the mistake of Vashti we are the body of Christ the pain of one is the pain of everyone if only one church is growing and the rest are suffering it is the it is a loss to everybody no single church no matter how accurate has the ability to single-handedly bring the global harvest it will be a corporate activity so whether you have 10 members or 2000 members or 1000 members we must have mutual honor to ourselves do not disregard those producing results they are not producing results by mistake honor them for the results they command do not downplay the fathers they deserve their honor don't say this is orthodox this is pentecostal pentecostal charismatics be careful let's stop insulting our fathers in what we call the orthodox churches they may not be filled with the holy ghost as you know they may not bring revelation but there is wisdom they have lasted more than many young people respect them for what they have don't go around using revelation and anointing to insult the fathers some of these men have labored for the gospel they may not be able to speak well but they deserve our honor and hear me if you have gone ahead to offend any father of faith here go and look for him and apologize we are not acting this thing if it's real revival we are looking for these are the steps that lead to bible based apostolic revival are we together let me challenge everyone not to demean you but congregations please pray for your men of god please respect everyone who names the name of christ carrying the gospel every man or woman heads of mission agencies heads of churches you have no idea on the attack that the 
average man faces all of these servants of god will tell you some of them the attack is on their children some of them the attack is on their health while you are sleeping your pastor is awake praying while you are eating he is fasting we must banish sarcasm from the plateau if you hear that a man of god is sick and is in jute don't celebrate and say i, I always didn't like him you should rush there whether you are a church member or not i hear you are a minister of the gospel and you are not feeling fine i may not know you but on behalf of me and my wife let me pay for the bill let me tell you this if we carry this spirit there will be no room for the devil to destroy us here and let me say this finally i apologize for keeping you here sirs for those of us that god has trusted with a bit of revelation look up there is a word of caution knowledge can puff up for some of us who are opening to a bit of visions a bit of prophecy a bit of miracles we are usually the ones who go around with our small world insulting people and mentoring young people to tear down others don't do that let the abundance of knowledge not bring pride let it bring humility and submission so be cautioned prayer groups different para ministry agencies do not sit down tearing down people no don't do that if god opens your eyes and you see dimensions that a church should be entering into and they are not yet entering into go on your knees and pray for them god open their eyes to see that light do not teach the young people to rebel rebellion does not bring glory to god it was that scene of rebellion and treason that threw lucifer from heaven to where he is let us not make that mistake lucifer has taught us that lesson already hallelujah again we declare the church on the plateau is united this is what i want you to do after this conference i like you to use your social media handles and say a united plateau not just politically but even spiritually write it this conference i permit you to do it now we are advocating a united plateau regardless church whatever it is we stand in unity in the name of jesus christ lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your can you sing it for me lord make us instruments of your peace once the pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments of peace we declare this prayer over plateau in the presence of the servants of god and in the presence of god's people let this dream and this prophetic word come to pass in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ god bless you sirs thank you let's honor them someone please stand to hold their hands while they go thank you sir thank you ma thank you sir god bless you god bless you are you tired praise the name of the lord can you lend me 10 minutes do i have 10 minutes with you so that we'll pray if i don't have a chance to pray for the sick and we stop here i still feel fulfilled because god has done something that is more prophetic than you see praise the name of the lord but i need to at least pray for the sick this is our last session we may not take testimonies but let's declare over the sick and then we're about to pray for the requests praise the name of the lord this is the time you now pray lift your voice and pray father everything i have written here in the name of jesus i wave it goodbye forever what are you turning to wine help me open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you pray none like none like you into the darkness
of the Lord. Now, no matter how we minister to people, we see in parts. But this is the most accurate representation of everyone's desire here. If there are still people bringing it, we have just a few seconds. Please do it quickly. I'm not standing here as one who is better than anyone by any means. Not at all. It is a privilege of the election of grace. But hear me. I dare to tell you that I have a covenant of answered prayer with God. The Lord left me a covenant. And this is why we do what we are doing. I assure you in the name of the Lord. That if God be God. Everything you dropped here. If it is to live your life. It must live your life. If it is to come into your life. It must come into your life. In the next one minute. Wherever you are. Stretch your hands to this request and begin to pray. Father, the end comes. The end comes. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Shake a pakata barato sikata. Shkata barata kata pratekatia. Lekate bros koto parutasia. Miracles, oh God. Miracles, oh God. In the name of Jesus, turn impossible situations around. And if our God is for us, and if our God is for us. Then you could ever stop us And if our God is with us Then what can stay And if our God If our God is for us And if our God Arise, O oh God, in your power. Arise in your majesty. Walk in miracles in the life of your people. Hallelujah. Please agree with me. I want you to agree with me as I pray with a loud Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every impossible situation represented here, we turn it into a testimony now. We turn them into testimonies now. Every barren situation receives an answer from heaven now. Every terminal disease receives an answer from heaven now. Hear me. In the name of Jesus, prophetically I stand on this request. And I declare the way I'm standing on it now Every trouble that is above you I bring it under your feet now 
Please believe it. Please believe it. I bring it under your feet now. Some of you are writing this for your loved ones. They are not here. May the angel of the Lord's presence, wherever they are across this nation, across the globe, may their miracles follow them till it finds them. Hear me? Every request here about the salvation or the transformation of a child, a husband, a wife, I declare the goodness of God that leads men to repentance may it follow those individuals till they are saved every spirit that is back of the tragedies represented here we banish that spirit and we command it to live forever the same way you have written this request that is the same way you will write down their answers hear me any man in partnership with the gates of hell to see that this request do not come to pass tonight we release the sword of judgment all across this city let me pray for those who have written requests here listen we are not irresponsible people i know that for many people at least 50 or 60 percent of the prayer requests here i know by wisdom and i know by prophecy that they have to do with finances is that true because the pandemic has dealt a great blow even to the state and to the welfare of other people any christianity and any spiritual advocacy that neglects the well-being of the people is an irresponsible one whilst we are heavenly conscious whilst our attention remains over the things of the spirit we cannot be so careless as to ignore the pain that this pandemic has brought every time there was a pandemic it took prophecy to bring the territory out of financial troubles let me prophesy like elisha in the name of jesus over everyone who has gone down you've lost money in business you've lost money in investments something went wrong with your finances by the god of heaven and by the spirit of prophecy come out of that financial situation come out of that financial situation come out of that financial situation in the name of jesus hallelujah there are times when we have the privilege of listening to the news or talking with a few of your politicians in this city and one of the popular statements on the plateau is Bakudi. why is this project not happening there's no money for it let me tell you this there is a mystery that made the revenue to get bread and bring to Elijah at Brook Cherith. I stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic. By a means that we may not be able to explain, may God send financial help to the plateau. We attract investors in their tens and their hundreds. Very strategic programs that not just empower a few individuals, they will empower people from the grassroots to the highest level in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me there are still undeveloped land in this city am I right there are this it is called plateau the beautiful and there are no sentiments about it I don't know anything that does not grow here except you don't plant it may God raise investors I am saying it again who will make this place become one of the agricultural hubs of this nation and even Africa in the name of Jesus Christ we pray wisdom upon the government may God give them the grace and the wisdom to manage the available resources in the name of Jesus Christ if five loaves and two fish 
fed 5,000 people. Then we speak to the reserves of plateau. Be multiplied to feed everyone. Be multiplied to build roads. Be multiplied to rehabilitate schools. In the name of Jesus Christ. everyone here who is in politics and governance first we salute you and we appreciate you for your courage we salute you and we appreciate you it doesn't matter what party i'm not a politician at all we salute you and we appreciate you but then we encourage you in the name of the lord and we pray that the lord will help you whether as commissioners whether as the judiciary as workers in government in the name of jesus probably some of them are following some of them are watching here we pray for the grace and the courage to do what is right we pray that you be governed by the fear of the lord we pray that you be governed by conscience we pray that you be governed by a sense of posterity may god grant us grace to do what our children will be proud of tomorrow in the name of jesus christ the temptation for self-centeredness the temptation for me myself and my tribesmen in the name of jesus we banish we declare grace to conquer that temptation plateau state is for all of us and until we all rejoice we are not yet there in the name of jesus christ Let me speak over the sick and the final impartation. Our time is gone. I sincerely apologize. If you are trusting God for a miracle in your body, wherever you are, please lay your hands there. You don't have to come out. You just lay your hands. Please. Lay your hands. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, please do well to just pl place your hand on your chest. I believe in miracles yesterday our worship people sang thank you please burn it please burn it some of the things there are private and personal and you can do well to set them on fire the same way it is burning that's how every devil that stands against you will roast to death in the name of jesus hallelujah let's pray father in the name of jesus there are people standing here with terminal diseases others standing here with death sentences i see some of you lifting photos of your loved ones who probably are in the hospital lord you are a miracle god a miracle worker we have thought so much about that right now in the name of jesus christ even for those of you standing i see you those standing at the overflow standing on the trucks we are seeing you i like you to believe even as we pray in the name that is above all names every spirit that is back of any infirmity we sanction you by the word of the lord and we declare your power broken over every sick one here in jesus name be delivered right now in the name of jesus now i declare every infirmity every disease from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet be healed right now in the name of jesus peptic ulcer be healed in the name of jesus everyone here with sickle cell anemia we change that genotype now we change that blood group now in the name of jesus please believe it every kind of cardiovascular challenge we correct it now by the power of the holy ghost every kind of blindness partial blindness complete blindness be healed now in the name of jesus migraine headaches be healed in the name of jesus deafness on one or both of your ears we command them open now in the name of jesus everyone here who is barren it doesn't matter what the reason is according to the time of life return as a joyful mother of children 
high blood pressure we curse you now in the name of Jesus sugar diabetes we curse you in the name of Jesus every kind of malignant growth around your body lumps around the breast area fibroids around the abdominal area we command you shrink and die now in the name of Jesus HIV be healed now in the name of Jesus cancers of all sorts ulcers of all sorts be healed now in the name of Jesus heart palpitations in the name of Jesus be healed now I'm seeing someone you get so dizzy you can't even stand in the Sun for a few minutes you begin to gasp it's like your breath is leaving you the Lord is healing you right now in the name of Jesus Christ was he yesterday or today the Lord healed a lady with the issue of blood I'm seeing many people having those kinds of irregularities in the name of Jesus be healed right now every kind of bone condition every kind of bone condition that has led to any sort of deformity whatsoever be corrected now in the name of Jesus and let me declare over you if there is anyone here that the spirit of death is upon and the devil is already planning that it will be said about you survived by in the name of Jesus Christ I command death to pass over you be healed in the name of Jesus whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus be healed right now and the sickness that leaves you even after this conference this crusade may it never return to you in Jesus name for those of you who are standing in for your loved ones holding their photos lifting their faces on your phones I can see them in the name of Jesus may the power that raised Christ from the dead visit them in the hospitals bringing healing and perfect soundness in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now please open your heart for the impartation this will be my last session and we're done I believe in impartation when Saul lost his father's donkey the Bible says they could not find the donkey and all three of them went in search of a prophet called Samuel and then the Bible declares that when they met Samuel at the gate of the city Samuel said you go up and I will tell you what is in your heart listen as soon as Saul met Samuel three things happened number one the donkey that was missing for a very long time mysteriously found its way there is restoration with the prophetic it can restore let me speak to you everything you have lost relationships finances mantles possibilities your job by the God of heaven and here at this crusade in the name of Jesus I declare supernatural restoration hear me if you have the faith to believe I declare that 90 days from now within three months by the God of heaven like it happened when the ark of God was taken to the house of Obed Edom it was in three months God turned the life of that family around in three months may God bring supernatural restoration hallelujah now watch this Samuel told Saul that the donkey you have been looking for has been found blessing number two he said on your way returning you will meet three strangers holding two loaf of bread they will salute you that is honor 
and they will give to you that is favor let me speak over your life the proof of favor is not money the proof of favor is the loyalty of the hearts of men in the name of jesus christ both honor and favor may my god allow it rest on your life now honor gives you visibility favor gives you access honor gives you visibility favor gives you access i prophesied honor gives you visibility and favor gives you access number three now you don't have to bring anyone under the anointing out whether you're an usher or not if anyone falls under the anointing just help them where they are so they don't hurt themselves it says you will come to the garrison of the philistines that when you come there a grace you did not leave home with will return with you and when they saw Saul prophesying they said is Saul also one of the prophets listen to me impartation is powerful it has been abused but when the anointing is administered within the jurisdiction of balance and scripture it can work wonders in the life of the recipients i am a product of many anointings there is a grace for speed there is a grace listen i want to release that grace that in one year a man can achieve what in a decade he's not been able to achieve i pray for you i stretch my hands from my right to my left from the front to the back my god and my king and my savior upon someone in this place help them please may the grace for speed come on you take that grace take that grace take that grace supernatural achievements on the plateau in the name of jesus speed in business speed in ministry in the name of jesus receive that grace hear me there is a grace for favor i call it the esther anointing esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the b part it says and esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her esther chapter 2 verse 17 and the king loved esther more than all the virgins and he made her queen instead of Vashti. exodus chapter 3 verse 21 i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty i declare by this impartation of favor the season of emptiness in your life emptiness in your church emptiness in your business emptiness in family in career it comes to end in the name of jesus take that anointing take that anointing take that anointing favor in the morning favor in the afternoon favor in the evening in the name of jesus just help those under the anointing the last prayer because thou has loved righteousness and hated wickedness it says therefore god even i god hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows let me tell you how it works there is a serious prayer i want to pray for you right now it's called the ministry of destiny help us listen to me all blessings come from god through men to men please hold on in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who loves you matters do not say men do not matter uh -uh. all blessings your prayer requests some of them written here some of them they are in the hands of a man one signature help this person that's it it can change don't downplay men when you're honoring god as the king seated on the throne that's fine but with the dynamics of excelling in the cosmos you cannot ignore men and rise 
my life today is a product of the endorsement the advocacy of men there are four kinds of people you will always need in your life number one they are called divine connectors they cannot help you but they know who can help you the slave girl and the king and naman she could not have the she didn't have the power to help him but she could take him to a prophet the key to receiving from divine connectors is discernment because many times they will come in a form that you may not appreciate number two you need men of influence men who have labored through their track record to become gatekeepers of industries gatekeepers of mountains one endorsement joseph i know you can interpret dreams but until pharaoh calls you you will remain in the prison the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon you need men of influence it the body of jesus christ your jesus was hanging on the cross there no prayer warriors prayer could bring it down it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea who used his influence with the government of the day to bring the body of jesus down you need men of influence as a pastor as a businessman as families number three you need gifted men gifted men will minimize wastages in your life you need men of skill david was a man of skill he didn't just kill goliath because he was anointed the benjamites historically speaking were people who had mastered the art of the sling it was said they could diverge arrows with the sling you need skillful people one skillful man their business people will save you from paying salaries of 100 people without results you need gifted people the greatest corporations in the world are full of very gifted people maximum output output that justifies the resources committed and then number four still talking of destiny helpers you need give you need burden bearers there are people who will be in your life not for your going forward but to keep you from going backward they are called burden bearers woe betides a leader who does not have burden bearers in your dark days if you are jesus and you do not have simon of cyrene you may not get to golgotha even though you are jesus there are many leaders who have served people for years but all they had in their lives were gifted people who were taking 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 and when days came when they needed help there was nobody burden bearers are not looking for your money they are not looking for anointing their assignment is to be with you there ruth told naomi your god will be my god your people will be my people if we die we die here burden bearers do not stand with you alone they die with you this is a message already because i'm going to speak it over your life there are ceos right now you had all kinds of people but when your company plunged down they left you alone where were the five thousand people that jesus fed when he was on the cross where were the recipients of his miracle where was the woman with the issue of blood when he was on the cross they even preferred to release a criminal there are many parents today who serve people raise people in their homes many people came from the villages they went down to university but in old age they're alone there is nobody to stand by them they are sick in the hospital and they are the mercy of doctors and nurses you need the prayer i'm praying for you so that when i declare destiny help us i'm talking of divine connectors i'm talking of men of influence i'm talking of gifted people and i'm talking of burden bearers are you ready to receive in the name of jesus these four groups of helpers i stand by the god of heaven and i declare over you especially as leaders spiritual leaders political leaders business leaders may they show up even in this season in the name of jesus may they show up in this season in the name of jesus now i pray for you there is a grace for signs and wonders there is a grace that grants you the unction to pray many of you it was not like this when you started with god but as it is your prayer life has gone down and this affects even preachers your word life your fire for god when you started it was not this way you could fast and pray 
but some of you the distractions of life some of you may be children i want to pray a rekindling of fire those days on the plateau they used to sing a song do not let my light go cold i'm crying out light the fire again i pray for you anyone whose spiritual life has gone down listen even if you receive money even if you receive political titles if your spiritual life is down you are not all right i pray for you fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your prayer altar the grace to pray the grace to fast the grace to intercede the grace to take god serious receive it in the name of jesus the grace and the courage to edit wrong associations i decree and declare don't say we've been like that anybody who will not be a contributor to kingdom come nor the betterment of your destiny i separate you from them forever in the name of jesus christ return back with signs grace for signs and wonders return back with the grace to heal the sick return back with the grace to raise the dead return back with the grace to cast out demons i agree by faith with every man of god here the next time you climb your altar fire upon that altar evangelistic fire healing fire deliverance fire in the name of jesus praise the name of the lord now let me make the altar call I believe in Jesus and I believe he's the only one who is able to save you have stood for long we have tabernacled in this place right from Saturday two sessions on Sunday one session yesterday night the final session this night and even though we have celebrated unprecedented manifestations of salvation the Bible lets us know that every time God's people are gathered there are always people who are sent the lord himself sends daily as many as should be saved tonight is our final night until we meet another time but give me the honor of making this one last call some of you are standing on the truck i see you outside the fence some of you are in the overflows some of you are right in this this space outside and whilst you heard me teach the Holy Ghost kept convicting you that it's time to make it right with Jesus. What shall it profit a man, the Bible says, if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? I'm about to make a very serious altar call for two groups of people. Number one, those who are committing themselves to Jesus for the first time. Number two, those who are saying, Apostle, I have been with the things of God, but for some reason my life has gone haywire. Please, let's minimize movement. There's still one more important announcement I'll make after this. But wherever you are, we have just two minutes for you. Use this opportunity and do not lose out. I'd like you to leave your seat and I want you to run as I count one to five. Please come and stand here. It's time to make it right with Jesus. Whilst we celebrate you with a hand clap unashamedly, leave your friends, your family and come and stand. You don't have to kneel. Please stand for space. Just are we celebrating what Jesus is doing? one please run and stand here lord i give you my heart i give you my soul two i live for you alone every breath that i take every moment i'm away have your way lord have your way four are you coming Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you, alone, every Quickly. breath that If you are joining them, please hurry up, please hurry up. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way in me. Now, Thank you very much all of you 
keep coming those who are coming come very quickly this is our last session together it is a noble thing just just suspend filling the form for a minute as i lead you to pray the bible says there is no name under heaven given unto man by which we must be saved as i lead you to pray this prayer please lift your right hand and i like you to repeat after me loud and clear jesus is here you're not reciting a poem jesus is in our midst say after me lord jesus one more time say lord jesus i love you with all my heart tonight i have heard your word i believe that you are lord you are savior you are king i hand over my life completely to you in exchange for your own life therefore i declare from tonight that the power of sin of satan is broken over my life forever i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the gift of righteousness the abundance of grace and i declare that from tonight and forever i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you it's an honor again to present these ones as trophies to you we thank you because no man who comes to you goes back the same lord i pray by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven i declare that the lord gives you a new beginning from tonight in the name of jesus i declare that the power of sin the power of satan is broken over your life that you begin a new walk with god i administer the peace of god that surpasses all understanding let it garrison your heart in the name of jesus